I did that specifically because I know that people are going to get pissed off and I am farming you for AdSense. It all starts with DM leaks from Hassan's editor. I wanted to keep that one at the very beginning to let everyone know that this isn't drama farming. This isn't clickbait. <laughs> but what? So it is poisoning the well. It's what I thought. It is poisoning the well, I guess then, okay. Other people took that seriously. Oh, dude, the narrative's getting me weird in real time! There was a lot of information that I couldn't release, and during this stream, for the first time, I'm going to be releasing all of that information for you all to see. Is it just me? Well, every time there's some new stream for Gavin, there's some new villain that actually was behind the scenes contributing to everything. Okay, guys, so here we are. I haven't really been following the Kevl stuff completely. I know there was some drama with the mod or something. Um, you know, I kind of wrote off what Kefels was doing, and I still think this is the case, to be honest. But obviously, because of the subject matter, I thought we'd talk about it, because, you know, why not? But um, basically, Kefels got... I think after a lot of the drama around Kiwi Farms and the doxing and stuff like that died off, I'm fairly confident... I'm fairly confident... Okay, I'll, I'll give it to Twitch as well. I'll give it to Twitch too. I'll be fine. I feel bad. I need to sort out all the emotes anyway. So we'll, we'll do it for now. We'll do it as a Christmas treat for everyone. Anyway, so Kevils has done a bunch of streams and they've all been very drama focused, which is fine. If you want to do drama, do drama. Okay, that's fine. That's up to you at the end of the day. But I feel like with Kevils... They haven't been doing it from a genuine place of like drama happening and then covering and talking about and doing the drama stuff. It's almost like their streaming career and their viewership, I think, kind of took a bit of a nosedive following a lot of the kind of drama coming to an end and stuff like that, which is to be expected. I mean, they were getting insane viewership at the peak of like their Kiwi Farm stuff and uh, all that stuff that was happening. And I feel like what happened is they got a little taste of the drama due to the Zandal stuff that happened. Nation. Hey, thank you for the five gifted. And I feel like over the past sort of like week or so, they've been like continuously trying to, to stir drama and keep the drama moving forward, despite not really having much on the table to talk about and to offer. You know, it's almost like they've seen their viewership and they've been getting like thousands of viewers, concurrent viewers, and they're like, oh, how can I continue this? How can I keep this going? And so the latest gambit is yesterday, Kevils did a stream, which was like some expose about Hassan. You know, I've heard a lot of kind of negative comments about it and it was a bit of a nothing burger. We'll see, I guess. Um... But yeah, I think what's happening here, the dynamic is Kefels is trying to find any possible drama that they can stir up in order to keep their viewership going, essentially. That's that's my kind of rough view on this. Because they did something about their mod or something. They got this ex-mod called Blood and Donuts, the person that um, face doxed me before I showed my face. And they had some beef with them or something. And there was a whole response stream they did to them i don't know it was all a bit gay anyway let's have a look and one thing i want to remind you all of in watching this is that and this is i think a big thing for me going forward is that i think when you look at stuff like this you've got to consider what the principles are of the person that is being talked about right because based on what I've heard, I'm fairly confident that I'm going to look at some of this and probably think it's not much or maybe even laugh at some of it. Okay, I've seen a few spoilers. But it's about what is Hassan's principles? What's Hassan's, you know, views? What does he profess to believe? Like, that's what this should be about. So you can look at it by your own policy and think a certain way about it. But it's like, what, would, what should Hassan do based on his professed politics and views, I guess, is the point I'm trying to make. But I think what kind of shows just how much the kind of uh, clickbait drama farming shit is happening here is the title. This is probably like, what, the third or fourth stream that Kefels has titled it in a very kind of clickbaity way. You know, I'm going nuclear now. 
time to reveal it all, time to go ballistic. Maybe they've changed some of it. One was called, obviously, famously, I was raped. Yeah, look, look. So you've got um, the kind of the Xander Hall stuff, tips to confront Xander Hall, the accusations get so from Mars, fairly standard stuff. And then I'm fucking pissed. The gloves are coming off. I was raped. I can't fucking take this anymore. It's time to burn everything down. It's time to end it all. It's time to go fucking nuclear. The Hassan Arby manifesto, all DMs leaked. So you can kind of see the dynamic here where, you know, it's fairly normal. And then all of a sudden, there's these like super clickbaity drama streams getting, you know, double, roughly double the viewership that they've normally been getting. And as I say, if you want to do drama, obviously, I don't care about that. Good luck to you. But I just, I hate it when it's like there's a falseness to it. You know, it's like, it's a bit forced. It feels forced. Like, this is all forced shit, just trying to sustain viewership. But we'll see. We'll see what happens, I guess. Let's get into it. I think we can probably speed it up as well. Hello. Hello. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. Uh, I keep seeing people say stuff like, oh, this is clickbait. This is clickbait. You have so little faith. Well, we have a lot to go over today. We will see, won't we? I'm ending this year on a fucking banger. I'm. I'm not going to let myself get pushed around just because Hassan has the bigger community, just because he's the bigger streamer. We're going to go over all of it. Well, listen, look, I'm not jealous. I'm not going to say I'm jealous, okay? But queeman has got a wiggler. I don't have a wiggler, eh? What's that about? I'm going to be... <sighs> I don't want to spoil anything. The first DM week is at the very beginning of everything that I have to say, though, and there are many more. I don't give a fuck what the response is. I found out, however, aside from people screaming and whining about me on Twitter, there's going to be no response from his community because I am on the same list now as Destiny and Vosh. I am not allowed to be talked about in the Discord. I'm not allowed to be mentioned in his chat. I am a ghost. So let's just put Why? everything out there. Let's That's just drop weird. everything, burn this fucking bridge, and move forward. Yeah, let's speed up a bit more, I think. It's a bit... So, um, one thing of note. I knew that I knew that Hassan wasn't streaming, and this is being dual-streamed to Twitch. I cranked the ads up as much as I could on Twitch. So if you want to watch the stream without watching, like, 10 minutes of ads every 30 minutes, you should move over to the site. I did that specifically because I know that people are going to get pissed off, and I am farming you for AdSense. <laughs> there it is. Surely. There it is right there. I mean, that's fine. You know, in principle, I'd have a problem with people farming content. That's, you know, based as far as I'm concerned. It just feels very odd to me because it's like they're trying to do the Giga Chad thing, which is fine. It's kind of funny, I guess. But like, this is, it. well, I guess we'll see. I've seen a few spoilers, so I don't want to go too much into like what I think about it yet because I don't really know. But like, this seems like you're, you know, curating, creating this drama out of probably not much, very limited stuff in order to slap Hassan's name in the title and get like a bunch of viewers. I think when I looked at them yesterday, they had like 3,000 viewers live or something like that. So let's see how many people like the stream over on YouTube. We got... 1,424 watching, only 247 likes. What the fuck? Let's fix that right now before we get into this. Jesus. We can do way better than this. Look at that disparity. I did my part. 
Yeah, I think it goes up to like 3,000 in a bit. Did we fix it? Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Thank you for doing your part, chat. Uh, should you be softer? I don't care. I'm only reading side chat today. We have a lot to get through. I have put a lot of time and thought into what I want to talk about. I'm going to be showing you a bunch of stuff that I have never shown people before. Things are going to get spicy. People are going to be fucking mad at me by the end of the night. Let's end the year with a banger. Well, that's the thing. It's it's not clear what Asana's done. Thought you were done. taking a break, Kufel? Yeah, the, see, that doesn't sound like me. Like, th this whole point of this, the, the reason titles like this are so good is because it's not specific as to what it is, right? Who fucking knows what this means? This could mean, this could mean R, this could mean P, this could mean bigotry, this could mean racism, transphobia, like a whole bunch of stuff. So people are going to click in thinking, what's this all about? I guess we'll find out. I, why? I don't do that. Yeah, what, what is a break exactly? Careful, this isn't even worth being mad at anymore, Le Mafau. Um, Yeah, I kind of feel like that, to be honest. I said my piece about the 100k and the kiwi farm stuff i don't know man like yeah I, th I think as long as you say your piece about it that's fine I, it, it's pointless it's pointless kind of uh, clearly you're never going to get anywhere with that you know oh how are you chud how are you a drama farmer criticizing drama farming what isn't that a bit dare i say hypocritical as the hypocrisy police i have determined to write you out a ticket for hypocrisy because you are... Listen, I'm not saying drama farming is bad. Drama farming is fine. If you want to drama farm, go ahead and drama farm. What I'm saying very specifically is that I believe that Kefels is doing this and farming drama, which, by the way, is fine, but it's off the back of very limited, like, drama and trying to overstate what's happening so it seems like a juicier story than it is, Right? Is that is that clear enough for you? Does that make sense? Do we need to explain it again? Like, I think that's a pretty obvious thing that I'm saying here. And I don't even know that's factual. I'm just saying that's what I think because I don't know yet. I've not seen what exactly is being laid out here. But yes, if you want a drama farm, that's fine. If it looks like you're doing it and, and kind of overstating and falsifying the drama that's happening to make it happen, then I'll say that. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. But is that what it comes across as? But this is something that needed to be done. Because a lot of people, they didn't, they, they didn't understand the shift in how I viewed Hassan because I never talked about it. Like, yeah, I disagree with his dog shit tanky politics takes, but there was also a lot of really fucking shitty interpersonal stuff that was going on be behind the scenes. And in the spirit of how my streams have been lately, we're going to put it all out there. We're going to talk about all of it. Oh, sup, Riverboat Jack. You got here just in time. Just in time. Okay, right. We're getting well, into yeah, it then, yeah? So, yeah? So v VCC TV said something like, not everything you, you don't like is chasing cloud. This is the thing. Um, this is the thing with Hassan specifically. You're not allowed to criticize him. If you criticize Hassan, you're a clout chaser. It's fucking stupid. He is the largest leftist political commentator. John, lying and stirring up drama for lies is this person's whole career. <laughs> Maybe for New Year's. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah. The Kiwi Farm stuff, I think, is proof positive of that, right? <laughs> it's so wild that, like, <laughs> I know these people don't care about any of this stuff, right? But it's so crazy that Keffels admitted to the fact that they lied about the reason they moved away from Canada. And that it was actually because their partner was abusive. And they're saying it was nothing actually to do with, well, they didn't say it explicitly, but they were like, it wasn't because of Kiwi Farms, it was because I was trying to get away from my ex. And... No one seems interested or concerned with, like, correcting the record on that. Um, even though that, to me, is a pretty major admission, but what can you do? On the live streaming side of the internet. Shut the fuck up. Grow up. Okay? This stupid fucking stan culture bullshit needs to stop. The fact that 
he has like an army of people with his fucking face as profile pictures is so fucking weird. He's not a K-pop idol. He's a political commentator. Like this guy, this man gets so fucking coddled. Yeah, also, yeah, with the other way, yeah, the Doc Spin stuff, yeah. Yep. God, yeah, he wants... They only love him and worship him because he's hot, that's it. I mean, yeah, that's a, that's a big part of his appeal. <sighs> I, I guess we should, um, we well, should get the into it. Parasocial stuff, yeah. This is going to be fun. I'm I'm very excited. This is this really is the closing of an entire chapter. Also, the other thing as well is I feel that what's going to happen is there's probably going to be a reliance on hatred for San to get the medicine to go down. I don't really like Hassan. I'm not a San guy myself, but We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, come on, let's watch. How how is it any of this actually relevant? I mean, okay. How, <laughs> let's talk to the chat, chat, I guess. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's on one point five. Any higher it just doesn't really sound right. One point five's fine. Then let's get into it. I'll try not to pause too much unless it's relevant, okay? I hope you're ready for slideshows because my slideshow skills are improving substantially. Okay, it's a slideshow. Ooh. The San Arby Manifesto. Ooh. I got some sick ass transitions. Oh yeah, you know it. Also, while we're at the start of the stream, we have just reached a new milestone. Not only was December the highest viewership I have ever had on a stream before, as of just now, well, by the end of this stream, I will have reached the highest grossing month in my entire career. Um. I watched as Hassan's community mocked me relentlessly last year. Mm. They held me up as a hero when I was fighting against Kiwi Farms. And then when I couldn't take it anymore, when I needed to get help, I saw them fucking chew me up and spit me out. And I don't need them because the community that we have here is better. So, okay, this sounds like the, they're doing this because they feel slighted, I guess. In so, like, is, is there a genuine thing that's happened that needs to be revealed in some drama stream? Or is it just that they were mean to you and you didn't like it? So you decided to do this. I don't know. This comes across more like the latter than the former so far, but we'll see. We'll see. So now we'll watch the whole thing. It's fine. Don't worry. We've got time. That said, we've got a lot to go through. Actually, it isn't that long for a drama. Let's start stream. off. Two, two hours twenty-two. I'll minutes. read all of the super chats at the end of the stream. Ooh, all the super. Oh. We've got a lot of a lot of stuff to go through on today's stream. DM leaks. Um, I do want to address a Twitch chatter. So someone said, you don't need them. Our community is superior, legit cult speak. Oh, no, you can be part of Hassan's community. In fact, I encourage you to be part of Hassan's Oh, community. by the way, I'll throw this in here because this will probably be a YouTube segment. And I think it came up in the last video. So I alluded to some extra drama dropping in the beef between Keffels and Xanderhal. And there's someone called Cherry, C-H-E-E-R-R-Y. Cherry is in the fruit, who is Xanderhal's editor. And... I said that I'd heard on the grapevine that there may be a leak. Cherry might be leaking some DMs. I probably said a bit more than I should have done, to be honest, because the person that told me, you know, said to keep it on the down low. Normally I do. But it's Christmas, okay? I let a little bit slip, okay? Look, sue me, okay? Normally I'm like a fucking lockbox, but I said a couple of words more than I should have done, okay? Anyway, anyway, anyway. They apparently found out about this and they claimed that I was making it up. 
No, I'm not going to press play because I'm explaining something. Okay, let me finish explaining. They claimed I made it up to cause drama. That isn't true. I didn't make it up. I did hear a rumor that that was going to happen. Um, turns out that wasn't true, but I don't think it's not true because there wasn't some truth to it, possibly. I think it's not true now because they changed their fucking mind. They changed their mind <laughs> after, I don't know. I don't know what exactly what happened, but it seems like they changed their mind and now are trying to downplay the idea that they were going to do it. Listen, Haxi, you're clearly trying to wind me up. That's the second comment you've made that's clearly just intended to wind me up, but it's not going to work, okay? I spoke it out of existence. But yeah, apparently that was uh, that was made up. It wasn't made up. I did hear a rumor, okay? And that's about it. Community. People in my community might be able to influence them into having better positions. I'm not going to tell you who you can and can't watch. So, like you weren't Jesus. kidding with the Twitch adverts? Yeah, I cranked the fuck out of the Twitch adverts before starting this because I knew that Twitch chat would be full of Hassan fans and I want them to give me as much money as possible if they're going to come in here and talk shit. Site chat's hosted through the YouTube though, so none of you have to worry about that. Jesus. Good lord. All How right. many viewers did they get yesterday? Or whenever this was. I'm just about ready to get into it. Well. Let's go. 262 hours. I'll show you how this all started. I mean, they... they, they I mean, you can't... I mean, yeah. Look at that. Fair play. They definitely got some Hassan heads through the door. I've got no doubt about that. It all starts with DM leaks from Hassan's editor. Now, this needs to be clarified. Hassan has multiple channels. He has Hassan Abi, his largest channel. Ooh. He has his Hassan channel. He has the Fear and Podcast channel. And he has the Hassan Abi gaming channel. Ooh. So these are Hassan's two editors. Oh. Austin Ox and Comrade Lamb. Austin Ox runs the Hassan Abi and the Hassan channel. And Comrade Lamb Ooh. runs the gaming channel. So it'll be broken down for us. I'm going to start. I have DMs from both editors. <gasps> that I have to show you all. Oh my goodness. But we're going to start with Comrade Lamb. July 20th, 2022. I said hello to him. And oh. he responded this. <laughs> oh shit. Hi. Just want to say, you are extremely brave for continuing what you're doing despite everything. Much love. So, you can tell from this point. Things haven't gone bad yet. Starts off good. Until December 19th. Just a week ago. <gasps> oh my goodness. I got sent a one piece panel. All respect for you. I've lost. You don't deserve to be called a cook. And Comrade Lamb says to me, in a year and a half, you went from being a victim of this website to sicking it on someone else over petty shit. Fuck yourself. To which I responded, suck my dick. Oh wait, I don't have one. Get a job, oh. I guess. And then I remembered who I was responding to. And I said, oh, oh. I didn't realize who you were. My bad. You were if Austin Ox wasn't funny, talented, or even acknowledged by Hassan or his Ooh. community. <laughs> so. Okay, that was that was literally nothing. Okay, I mean, what? Wonderful. Okay. But how do I make money so, <laughs> off depressed people? Just made it through almost two hours of this at 2x speed. Thank you for the super you chat. Have a massive hate bone for Hassan or want to hear Keffel's lie about the swatting and go fund me some more. I want to hear all of that. Thank you very much. That wasn't really, I mean, yeah. So someone was nice to you once and then they were mean to you. Okay, right. Okay, let's keep going, I guess. See what else there is. I wanted to keep that one at the very beginning to let everyone know that this isn't drama farming. This isn't clickbait. <laughs> but what this person is like a second string editor, right? They're, they're clearly like, they've been, they've been given responsibility for the smallest channel. Um, they're clearly not particularly influential. I mean, I don't know what. Who cares? Some sh some some person that works with Hassan on a limited level was mean to you. Okay, like who cares? 
Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's much continue. More Maybe over. there's more. But for the people who don't know who Hassan is, I've included some tidbits so we can catch up with the lore, so to speak. Well, okay. Who is, is it catching up with the lore or is it poisoning the well? That's the question, isn't it? Let's see. Hanabi. Taylor Lorenz wrote a piece on Hassan back in 2020 Let's see. about how he rose to fame to become one of the biggest progressive left one of the biggest progressive leftist pundits on the internet. How Hassan Piker took over Twitch. The 29-year-old progressive political commentator has risen to the top of the platform after 80 plus hours of live election coverage. On election night, Hassan Piker, 29, was dressed in a navy blue Bernie 2020 sweatshirt and a Democracy Now! baseball hat. When he plopped down in a By chair- By the way, it's worth bearing in mind, and I don't know what direction this is going to take, but I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, didn't Taylor Lorenz write a puff piece about Keffels? I'm pretty sure that Keffels and Taylor Lorenz are probably, are probably on good terms, I'd say, like I would guess. ...who address his digital audience. I told you guys like a hundred times that places in the Rust Belt have a lot of mail-in ballots. They're not counting immediately, he said. What you're seeing right now is incomplete data. The words that followed were peppered with expletives. Since then, Mr. Piker, a progressive political commentator known for his frenetic on-screen presence, has been the most watched streamer on Twitch. He spent more than 80 hours this week in front of his camera with tons of tabs open on his computer, reading out news and providing analysis for his left-leaning millennial and Gen Z followers. Many say they find his candid, slightly chaotic style more relatable than that of the buttoned-up cable news anchors. Born in New Jersey and raised in Turkey, Mr. Piker graduated from Rutgers University in 2013 with a double major in communications and political science and took a job working for his uncle Cenk Uygur, a founder of the Young Turks, a progressive online news and commentary program. Now, did you know that Hassan actually ran a program where he was a pickup artist? We're doing a little trivia before oh. we get into the nitty gritty of today. Okay. So it is poisoning the well. It's what I thought. It is poisoning the well, I guess then. Okay. Yeah, we all know about this. Hassan did some cringe pickup artist thing. Um, maybe there's some clips I haven't seen before, but yeah, it was kind of cringe. Some people say it was like satire. I don't think it was satire. I think it was unironic. I think it was a serious thing that he did at the time. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> a lot see. of people were unaware. I'll read the next part of this, and then we're going to be going over something. He started off doing ad sales and business development for the program, but eventually wanted to make something of his own. In Chad, you spent enough time looking at a trans gun online to all my classified. Ch okay, I'm a chaser then. That is what I am. Sure. Good luck. 2016, Mr. Piker pitched the idea for The Breakdown, a Young Turks video series on Facebook that would deliver political analysis for a left leaning audience. His sharp criticisms of the commentator Tommy Lauren and President Trump's immigration ban proved to be a hit. Before long, Mr. Piker had gained fame as Facebook's resident Woke Bay, a title he said he resents. But by 2018, Mr. Piker was experiencing diminishing returns on Facebook and seeing the rise of right wing news dominance on the platform. He also noticed the algorithm shifting away from video. He set up a Twitch channel in March of that year and began streaming sporadically. I wanted a place where I could have people congregate every day, he said. So, in 2013, Hassan hosted a pickup artist show on the Young Turks called Bro Tip, where he taught college boys how to score dates with women. The show was scrubbed from their archives soon after. Let's watch. I just realized I had desktop audio still muted. I like to bop out to the intro tracks in my streams. Gets me hyped for the start. On this week's Social Guru, we cover an old classic warhorse, the let's get out of here rule. This one's been passed on for centuries and helped even the Vikings oh, yeah, get I've laid. One, I, I actually lost my virginity with this rule, by the way, I'm not gonna lie. So you're in the club, you finally use the five second rule because you're smart now, because you follow bro tip, and you start talking to this girl, it finally leads to hooking up, and you're bold enough to grab an ass cheek and then maybe even get some hand play downstairs. What is the next move? You need to get out of there, and you need to get out of there fast. Hopefully with the girl. So you have to use these five magic words, let's get out of here. You might think, wait a minute, there's no way this is gonna work. Yes, it does. Let's get out of here. It's time to get out of there and it's time to separate her from her herd, meaning her crowd of girlfriends that are going to do their best to cock block you because they're fat and lonely. If let's get out of here doesn't work, you exchange numbers, she leaves, you leave, you guys talk later, and you can continue on your conquest for the rest of the night. If the let's get out of here does work, you have successfully left the club with a hot girl, hopefully, in the cab, and you're going to your place or her place. Now, once you're in a more intimate one-on-one -on -one situation, it's much easier to get things moving forward. If you hadn't played the finger fun already in the club, now is the time to utilize those magic fingers. Take her back to your house, <laughs> show off that impressive vinyl collection that no one else gives a shit about, and go into town. <sighs> once you bring them back home, it doesn't matter how impressive your Spotify playlist is, or however many stamps you've collected in 21 years of virginity, the only thing that'll matter is your teacup pig. 
If you don't have that, it doesn't really matter what you have. You should move on to the sex as soon as possible. Pour a glass of Yellowtail because you have nothing better. Put some Marvin Gaye on and get your freak on for the first time in your life ever. You're welcome. And that concludes our bro tip of the week. Leave your comments and ideas and opinions that I really truly care about in the section below. And if you don't, I'm going to come to your house and I'm going to have sex with your dog. <laughs> so that was bro tip. I just thought putting this in as a little piece of trivia would be fun. Not related to anything I'm going to be talking about, but an interesting piece of... It's not, okay, it's not putting pieces of trivia in for fun. It's called poisoning the well. Like you're poisoning, you're trying to poison the well against the song by bringing up some old clip. I mean, it, I don't know. I just, it's fine if you want to do that, if you want to just shit on him. Um, I mean, first of all, the problem for my, particularly my community is you're misogynistic, so you think he's based. But second of all, it's just like, yeah, let's just say what you're doing. You're not doing it as a bit of trivia. So, oh, look at this embarrassing, stupid thing he did, which goes against his current principles. Sans lore. Be honest about it. You want to fucking destroy him. I want to talk about my relationship to Hassan because I haven't, I've never elaborated on this. As of the stream right now, we're still mutuals. He's talked about me on his stream before. He's called me a friend of the show. We'll see where that goes. But as of now, I am being given the destiny treatment by him and his community. You can't talk about me in his stream chat or the Discord. And let's talk about why that is. Ooh. Hassan first became aware of me around the time that Destiny was banned. Caught in the DGG is clearly. Now, as a joke, I took credit for getting him banned back in the day. I didn't. But a lot. Of Wait, is this really what the fucking narrative is going to be on this? Kefels was trying to get Destiny banned repeatedly. I feel like I'm being gaslit right now. <laughs> Am I crazy? I'm pretty sure at the time that Kevl's intent was to, like, get Destiny absolutely fucked in whatever way she could. A lot of people took that seriously. <laughs> Dude, now, the narrative's getting me weird in real time! On with me, you know that Destiny and I have talked in okay, person. Okay, that's wonderful. But how do Thank I you for the super mind? chat. I even apologized for, for some of the shittier Lines. things that I did to Should him logic last is year. A top on Kefels, D. But this is part of the lore, part of how all of this happened. Because of Hassan's community, and I want to give him credit where credit's due, I was able to raise a substantial amount of money to support the trans community. But I don't think, in retrospect, he was doing that out Yeah, of no, this is just a total whitewashing of history. I mean... <laughs> It feels like every time Kevils talks about some past drama, the entire narrative on it changes. And then that's it. <laughs> that's now the narrative. But it's just not true. And the thing is, you know, obviously... And that's why I say I feel like I'm being gaslit, because I remember going through that period and having a certain perspective on it. And now that perspective is being challenged in ways that seem incredibly dishonest and lies. And without going back and digging into all the fucking aspects of it, it's difficult to, uh, you know, to really prove one way or another what happened. The only thing I could say is, if you want to go and dig into it, all the videos are there. Um, much like with the Kiwi Farm stuff, you know, if you want to go and look at what happened and all the bits and pieces that went down, all the videos are there. You can go and look at it yourself. There's probably fucking hours and hours and hours of content on it that you can see. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, another, another whitewashing, much like with the Kiwi Farms thing and saying that the reason they moved was because of their partner, you know, that's kind of been accepted into the law now, but yeah, it's like, uh, you know, in a, you know, like Star Wars or whatever, right? When they change a narrative point. So they change a point of the narrative and they just gets accepted. It gets put into the Wikipedia page and that's it. That's now a fact. That's what we're doing. That's what's happening here. Kindness of his heart. And I'll explain why. Retroactive continuity, yes. We need to go back to the swatting. Go back to everything that happened and talk about Hassan's response. This was a video that was filmed in my hometown immediately following the swatting last year. Okay, 
So, um, I'm going to address another Twitch chatter. I'm contractually obligated to address you. By the way, I cranked ads. You are giving me money right now. Thank you. So, Firestar116 says, and now you're trashing him for clout. You're such a good person. I just thanked him for helping me raise money for the trans community. I'm sorry, but someone who is an ally to the trans community, they're not immune to criticism. Grow the fuck up, kid. Now, let's continue. Clarence Renty says a false email with her address was sent to London City Council claiming she had killed her mother and was intending to shoot people at City Hall who were straight. The email, Sorrenti says, had given out her real address and resulted in police with guns at her doorstep and her being arrested. When I went into the hallway and then saw that assault rifle, I screamed and I, I thought I was going to die. London Police Service confirmed the arrest to Global News. They added Sorrenti was released without charges and they are continuing to analyze her electronic devices but could not offer any more information. Sorrenti says the hate she's been facing is because of her prominence as a trans woman and activist. Oh, they want me dead because I'm a high-profile transgender activist. There's a big target on my back, and for the past year, transgender people have been at the focal point of a culture war. It's not just the doxing, but Sorrenti takes issue with London Police Service's handling of the incident. Evidence bags she showed Global News indicates police- So, back then, there was a lot of information that I couldn't release. And during this stream, for the first time, I'm going to be releasing all of that information for you all to see. Please use her Ooh. dead name, the birth name she had before transitioning, which is considered highly offensive. Dead name, they're looking at it. Asked her if she they're looking at it. They're looking at it. The way that I was treated by the police really showed me they know nothing about transgender people or issues. Police told Global News that this is an active investigation, but despite being a prominent name online and having run for office provincially and federally, Sorrenti thinks police's actions are driven by ignorance. And so I had a hate crime perpetrated against me, and instead of the police helping me, they victimized me for it. As for the trolls and hate mongers, Sorrenti says okay, she remains wonderful. undeterred. But how do I not back money down? off I press people? We could say actually that Chud has done more for trans people just by doing less damage. There's a point where help isn't help. What? Think of the five dollars. What do you mean? I don't want it to be thought that I've done anything for trans people. Not a single thing. I know that the work I do is incredibly valuable and thousands of trans people have told me that. I have people almost every day saying they came out to their families because of me. And if they want me to stop the next time, they better manipulate the police into pulling the trigger. Amar Khan, Global News. So, I'm going to show you all for the first time some of the things that I couldn't back then that I can now. Okay. Vape, hit the vape. It's been over a year, so let's go over some stuff. This is the email, the email that was sent to every member of city council, as well as the mayor of my hometown. Ooh. Hello, my name is Clara Sorrenti. I redacted the address and I'm from Redact. Listen, I've got to be honest with you. I know that the police are supposed to respond to this sort of thing. They kind of have to, right? Okay. But uh, <laughs> why would they send it to the mayor? Isn't that a bit of a clue? That's got to be, in, like, why on earth would you send an email to the mayor of a city? Oh, I'm going to do a shooting. London, Ontario. I am a transgender person. My dead name is Lucas Roberts. I have had enough of you anti-transgenders being in positions of power and oppressing us. <clears throat> you finally broke me, you cisgendered, transphobic assholes. When this is over, the entire city will remember my name. I have killed my transphobic mother, and today I will be going out to City Hall and shooting every cisgendered person I see with a gun I illegally acquired. All I wanted to do was buy minors callers and make them call me mother. But you pushed me too far. See you in hell. Attached to this email was a photo of a handgun that belonged to the person who sent the email. To this day, no one knows who sent this email. And to be clear as well, I'm fairly certain um, there's another website called uh, Docsbin. Which you're not supposed to say apparently because it promotes it. But anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that that is the site that is the originator for the information and also the uh, like. I believe the swatting and stuff because as much as Kiwi Farms gets a lot of shit, um, doxing is allowed because it's allowed in the First Amendment. And the whole point of the website is anything that is legally allowed under the American Constitution legal system is fine, but swatting is illegal. So, although obviously you can't really control if someone sees it and swats, if it's known that someone's done swatting, I'm fairly certain that is against their site-wide rules 
and would lead to them getting banned. Right? Cool. I, I, you know, I'm not a regular um, user. I'm not having an account on there, but I'm pretty sure that's the rules. <laughs> hey, Hassan the Hun, I hope living your entire life on your knees, bowing to, worshipping at the feet of, outright for leading the LGBT community has been worth it. Now you're going to have lunatic... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, the whole principle, they've got this thing and they don't touch the poo. The idea being that you shouldn't fuck with the people, you should just watch and document from afar. That's the point. Anyway, oh my God. So Josh is uh, weighed in on the situation, I guess. This is a call between me and another That's Josh Moon, service. guy that runs Kiwi Farms. In the month before the swatting. Uh, I am investigating uh, the threatening uh, occurrence that was generated today. And uh, can you just state your name for the record, please? Clara Sorrenti. And Clara, is that your legal name? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and I want to ask you a date first, but how old are you, Clara? I'm 28 years old. Okay. And you don't live in the city of Toronto? No, I live in London, Ontario. Okay. Okay. Clara, uh, you're not a suspect in any incident. I want that you, you to understand that, okay? Okay. Um, but I will ask you not to record this uh, conversation. Um, this is a... Uh, by the way, um, the police cannot legally make you not record a conversation. You can oh. <laughs> record conversations with the police all you want. Police investigation. Um, don't disclose the contents of the uh, the statement that we're going to have right now. Um, and just okay, people are saying yes, they can. Um, it, it doesn't matter anyway because the police officers asked. They didn't demand or say they asked. That's a, that's obviously a strategy that when police officers, when police officers, um, don't want to seem like they're making or forcing you or or using their power to make you do something, they'll ask you. They'll ask you nicely, basically. Um, and I don't know what the rule is in Canada. I I would have presumed that in Canada the police have got more authority than like american police in these matters because there's no first amendment but i don't know for sure i don't know canadian law and we're not going to get down that rabbit hole but to be completely honest with me in the question that i asked you okay if there's a question you don't want to answer you don't have to answer this the statement is completely voluntary you understand that of course i just want to clear things up and okay. also sorry me personally my personal view on it is i think you're totally in your right if you want to to record interactions with the police whether it's legal or not i think um for your own records you should uh you should do so um because it's just a bit of extra protection for you if something happens in the future. So I don't really have a problem with recording the call, to be honest. Leaking it publicly as part of this, what relevance this is, I don't know yet. But uh, but yeah, certainly recording it for your own records is is fine. My opinion. Great. Um, Clara, the reason I reached out to you today, um, as I indicated, it's a threatening investigation. Um, we've received reports of emails that have been sent to individuals that I'm not going to disclose to you at this time um, from an email address that appears very similar to your name. Um, there's just a couple of uh, fonts that are changed, um, but the contents of these emails um, target an identifiable group, okay? Okay. Um, and you and I had a conversation about five minutes ago, is that correct? Yes. You said um, that you had, uh, March 25th of this year, visited an online harassment campaign, is that correct? That is correct. Can, can, you, can you clarify that? Can you tell me more about that, Clara? On March 25th, I became the target of a website known as Kiwi Farms. It's been implicated in the suicides of three different people. It is a phone call without the consent of all parties involved. It's a two-party consent country. They give the five dollars. Um. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's. I mean, I doubt. I. I find it highly unlikely the police are going to try and um. Take you down for recording one of their calls, but maybe it isn't against law. Anyway, let's give it. Thank you for the five bucks. Can you clarify that? Can you tell me more about that, Clara? On March 25th, I became the target of a website known as Kiwi Farms. It's been implicated in the suicides of three different people who have been targeted by that website. It's also been banned in New Zealand because they refused to take down the manifesto and live stream of the Christchurch massacre shooter. Um, they've done things such as doxing members of my family as well. I love that that's used as a point against Kiwi Farms, but actually. To me, that's a sign of their dedication to um, free speech principles that they wanted to keep that up. Was my anyway. What's that called? Which the website? No doxing. You said doxing. 
but what is Doc saying? And yeah, obviously, yeah, we know all the other information there is completely bullshit. Like this implicated in the three suicides thing is bullshit, etc. Anyway, we'd be here all day debunking everything, and I don't really have the resources here to fuck it. it all the information is out there. If you want to go and look at all the Kiwi Farm stuff, it's all laid out in various videos from different creators that explain it all. But anyway. D-O-X-X-I-N-G. And essentially, that is seeking out and publishing home addresses and other sensitive information as part of a scare tactic. This has been an ongoing thing for several months, and I'm not really surprised that it's escalated to this point. So, this is a call I got before everything happened. And the uh, next I thing I want to show you all is the call with the same officer after the swatting. Good morning, Dr. Gibson. Hey, um, this is Claire Sorrenti. You talked to me, I believe, on July 31st about an attempted swatting. Hi, Claire. How are you? Hi. Um, I was wondering if you were aware what happened in London on the 5th. No. I okay. Back from days off today. Oh, okay. Um, so on August 5th, um, an email was sent in my name. No, wait, you're saying... Wait, wait, wait. She wasn't swatted. The thing is, I'm guessing the point that's being made here is they spoke to an officer and they thought it was clarified. Clarified. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? Oh, and um, but then the police turned up anyway, which I'm guessing wasn't expected. That reads a lot like the email that you were talking about. It was sent um, to every member of the London City Council, uh, stating that I was going to shoot up City Hall and kill every cisgender person I see. That I killed my mother. Yo, and that I possess an illegal firearm. Yo, I disavow. Um, the London SWAT team was called. Um, I. Had a, I had an assault rifle pointed at me. I was arrested. Oh, I'm, sorry. Um, I'm still a suspect in the ongoing investigation, despite the search warrant turning up no gun, and my mother is alive and well. Um, they seized uh, my computers and my cell phones and my fiance's computers, which had all of their um, PhD-related work on it. Um, I guess PhD-related work? Yeah, they're a doctorate student, and their only copy okay. of the thesis was on there. Oh, yeah. that's the abusive oh, one, isn't it? Thank you. And, uh, yeah, because no you, know, you, you don't have a detective name or anything. Um, I have a copy of the search warrant, if that helps. Um, uh, yeah, if you can email me the, the first page. Uh, sure. Uh, it was Constable Ryan McNichol, but yeah, if, hold on. If you Ryan leave, McNichol? yeah, if you leave me, um, if you leave me an email, I could just like take a picture of the warrant for you. I mean, obviously, we'll listen to the whole thing. I guess what it sounds like to me is this is very typical of any government department, including the police, are like this. You know. I mean, it's funnily enough, it's parody. It's not parody, but it's like you know, played on in Home Alone, right? We've all seen Home Alone. We just like Christmas. So hopefully, you watched it over the Christmas period. It's a great Christmas movie. Um, but the mother of the kid calls up the local police and tries to talk about what's happened, and they then pass it through to their colleague, who says they can't help because it's not related to the department. They pass it back to the other person. You know, any any bureaucracy, government, big company, whatever has these issues where there's lots of different people. They don't always communicate with one another. We just saw this happen with Twitch as well, with their obvious insane changes to the TOS that got reversed with the artistic unity thing. Um, so sometimes the left hand isn't speaking to the right, basically. I watched Die Hard as well. Great. Oh, my God. I actually watched a bunch of Die Hard movies. I had a great time. I had a great time catching up on the Christmas, Christmas movie fun. Sorry, but I didn't call you back this morning. I did get your message. Um, I just we have a missing person on the go. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, I just wanted to see if you could like. So, to answer a few questions, this is related to the stuff that I need to talk about with Hassan, as well. This is the first time I have ever released these recordings. The legal case is still ongoing. Hmm. Uh, help give them this additional information, because yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I did get it. Okay, great. So just send me uh, the first page of that search warrant. Don't forget about the questions. Yeah. Did did um you ever end up talking uh to LPS or did they contact you? Uh no. Okay. No, I I've just been in correspondence with that email company in Switzerland and working on that and not getting very much help. They don't keep uh well I can't talk about the investigation too much. Oh, I understand. Um, but well, I'm really... the, the problem is is that what's been submitted is a human rights complaint, I believe, and again, I don't have a fucking clue about the Canadian police's process or whatever. Um, but I'm pretty sure the complaint and the alleged lawsuit that was supposed to happen with 100K was supposed to be around like misgendering and their gender identity not being treated with the correct respect it deserves. But now it sounds like maybe it's going to be more of a procedural thing. Like, you know, you were aware of this fake swatting attempt thing and you even called me about it. And 
you you still sent police officers around, which I guess the point is shouldn't have happened on the basis that you'd spoken to the police ahead of time. But I'm happy that you'll talk that you'll talk to them because I would really like my name to be cleared. The London police have never dealt with my defense attorney said like he's been like working in the city for decades. He's never heard of a swatting attempt. So I um, I have a yeah, it was very dramatizing, to be honest. Well, I'm going to get a copy of the report and I'm going to speak with them this morning. OK, OK, thank you so much. Thank you. So that was a call with a detective from Toronto not my hometown. The reason why was because an elderly man who happens to share my last name was also the subject of a swatting because Kiwi Farms had narrowed down my address to either this old man's address or my address. Here is the statement from the elderly Italian man from Toronto, Ontario. It's not as uh, They came out there after not even 10 minutes after they were here. Tom the left, and then one came back and said, "Mr. Rent, I'm sorry, was uh, just yeah." This was a thing at the time, if you remember. Um, this I, I'm pretty sure did actually happen. Is there was another guy that got swatted, some old dude. I remember this being a thing at the time. They called the They just arrest somebody in London. Yeah, they didn't show me no way. Nothing. I said, "Okay, no, we don't look at you." I said, "Go, go right ahead." Yeah, you know, I got nothing to, to be afraid. Yeah. Um. I mean, you know, if I would have something to hide, I would say, "You need a warrant." But I don't got nothing to hide. I said, "You're welcome. Go ahead." I was in bed. I was in pain with my sight. It was 11 o'clock when the, uh, the officer came back here. And also, me. yeah, remember as well, we've got on our lips. On our Christmas chocolate filled lips, we've got Kiwi Farms, Kiwi Farms, Kiwi Farms, Kiwi Farms. But remember that some of the stuff that happened or the worst stuff that happened, I believe, didn't even necessarily come from KF. It was this other website. So, you know, that's not to say like. I'm I'm more of a Kiwi Farms guy now. I used to be more kind of like anti-Kiwi Farms, but over time, particularly with all the drama that happened around it, I had my mind changed about it, and I was like, okay, are there some shitty things they do? Yeah, obviously, you know? Um, but, like, I think it deserves to exist, particularly bearing in mind it's a legal website within the United States. I think the idea that it shouldn't be able to exist despite existing within the law of the United States is crazy. And obviously, there's been a whole host of issues they've had trying to keep the website up over the past year which is a whole other drama. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that you can be critical of it if you want with that, but at the same time, recognize that it's not absolutely responsible for all the bad things that happen in the world, you know? So I'm sorry, it's a mistake of address. They just arrest somebody by the name Charles Sorrento in London. I don't know what this guy's saying. I have another Sorrento here, one block away, mm. with my mother's name, Louis Sorrenti, and my daughter's name, Louis Sorrenti. These were all recorded on my end. These are all clips of much longer conversations that I have cut down for the purpose of explaining the content, the, explaining the context of what was anyway, going on in my life. This was about a song. Way. And the next thing I'm going to go over is Hassan's initial reaction to everything that happened. Here we go. So, yeah, I'm understanding here. So the whole point of this is look how bad things were at the time. And then look at what Hassan did or said about it at the time, right? That's the that's the point of this. Because Hassan covered this story on stream. Well, let's go, let's go deep into it. It's because it's it's teeing off the narrative and it's reminding everyone, you know, from Kevl's perspective, this is how bad my life was last year, and this is how Hassan responded and reacted and dealt with it, right? And I'm presuming that Hassan's response was bad, i.e. he he didn't demonstrate enough concern about what was going on or something. And he didn't react. Hard. Yeah, never... Hassan didn't react hard enough. Very typical problem for Hassan. Gave a reaction to it. So this will be the first time I've talked about the things that Hassan said. I'm going to talk about Twitch streamer, the largest uh, trans Twitch streamer, Kevils, a um, friend of the show and a community member. Um, Trigger warning, transphobia, swatting. I don't like that they covered this, but I guess she doesn't care uh, that like this is uh, revealed. Not a good thing to, in my opinion, it, it makes things worse. It makes matters worse. I've been on the internet for a very long time, but like revealing that um, you know you are openly revealing that you are swatted is not a good way to go about it. But you know, Hassan's correct. Hassan is just correct, a hundred percent correct. <laughs> like, what? yes, that is true. If you are doxed, swatted. Whatever the case may be, 
one of the worst things you can do is to draw attention to it and speak a lot about it and continuously talk about it, right? You might not be able to avoid talking about it if it happens in the middle of a live stream or something like that. Um, but yeah, drawing more attention to it is bad. Why is it bad, chat? Why is it bad? Because it emboldens people to keep doing it. It emboldens people to keep doing it. And they want to do it more because they know it's fucking with you and it's blowing your life up. So, I mean, I personally think that, yeah, as if you can, you should avoid talking about it publicly. And I think Asana is just correct on this front. But I'm sure this will be twisted into, oh, look, he didn't care about it. And he just said I should keep quiet. Da, 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 da. We'll see. Anyway, it's, let's not prejudge. Let's not pre yeah, it's their, it's their circumstances. So. so the first thing I'd like to say to this is this was a hate crime. This wasn't simply swatting, and I have been out and medically transitioning longer than Hassan has been online. This was an incredibly condescending way of responding to the situation. Okay, right. I'm going to get one guy here. How am I glazing exactly? By saying Hassan's correct about something that I think he's correct about. Is that glazing now? Oh, I think this person is correct about this. Oh, stop glazing, Chad. What are you doing? But yeah. Okay, it's going down a different angle, I guess. We're going down the hate crime route. Let's have a look. Now, here's the advice that he gave me. We have to find a way to make it stop. Okay, guys, like that's not going to happen. Even if, even with that, if that is true under Canadian law, what difference does that make to anything? You still should try and avoid talking about getting swatted because, yeah, it emboldens people to do it more and target you more. I mean, a great case case study in this, beyond what happened with Keffels, is <laughs> is um, uh, Fuzi. Look at what happened with Fuzi. Fuzi got continuously fuck, fucked with, swatted, fucked with, etc. You know, over the period of a few weeks because he kept engaging with and putting himself out there to get attacked like that, you know? To the point where he swatted himself. <laughs> He's got a gun to my head! He's got a gun to my head, quick! Okay, please. You're, you're... That's not how this happens. That's not how this works. So I don't know what the fuck to tell you, okay? Uh, as someone who has, like, dealt with this shit, has been in this space for 10 fucking years, that's not how this works, okay? Yeah, let's do it. Let's stop it. Okay, good luck. Have fun. Try to figure it out. It would be great if you could figure it out. Like, I personally feel irresponsible even bringing this up. I'll be honest with you. A lot of you wanted me to bring it up, so I fucking brought it up. I personally feel irresponsible bringing it up because no matter what the fuck happens, bringing attention to it makes it worse. There's 39,000 people in here. God knows how many of them are fucking haters, Nazis, people from those fucking spaces who are now celebrating this. So there you go. And now it will only get worse. So we're done talking about it, so never fucking bring it up ever again. Okay? I mean, Hassan is right though. Well, <laughs> it did get wait, it did get worse. He was correct about that. <laughs> what? He was correct. Yes, it absolutely got way fucking worse. People would dox you off your fucking bed sheets and shit, your hotel bed sheets and stuff like that. I don't know, man. Am I crazy here? Am I just glazing Hassan? Hassan is just on the money. He's correct about his takes here. <laughs> now, this is an incredibly, incredibly tone deaf response. If you, if you are the victim of sexual violence and you bring your rapist to justice, that's not going to solve the problem of sexual violence, but it is important to talk about it. If you are the victim of a racist hate crime and you bring the person who perpetrated it to justice, that's not going to solve systemic racism. But it, it's important to talk about it. It's important to bring these people to justice. And this was a transphobic hate crime. And he gave me the advice. This will always exist. Well, yes. OK, sure. But then that would be dealt with by the police, which maybe they weren't dealing with it properly. But that doesn't necessarily justify coming up with this whole fucking routine to set up 100K GoFundMe, the contents of which we still don't know exactly where it went. So just ignore it. So I see the people in Twitch chat saying, you were pushing for de-hosting of Kiwi Farms at that point. No, I wasn't. This was in the same week that and I... And also, the other the problem with that as well is that if you get raped, okay, if you get like actually raped by someone and you come up with a public statement and say, guys, I was raped, etc., etc., it doesn't have the same effect that like more people are going to try and come and rape you because you're talking about getting raped, right? That would be an, an absurd 
concept that that like all the rapists are going to go oh that person doesn't like get raped let's go rape them like rape is you know one of the situations that occurs in the in a given moment it's not like a bunch of rapists are going to descend on your property to try and rape you if you talk about it but the difference with swatting is it is true because it's all done anonymously and people can do it easily and often do it with limited risk of getting caught right um That leads more people to do the thing that you're complaining about. Back to rape analogy. I didn't bring rape into this. I didn't bring rape into this. And yeah, it's obviously exactly like it's a lot easier to catch a rapist than it is to catch a swatter because swatters can hide behind seven firewalls. Chud, you're so wrong. Winky face. Does that mean what? Where you are? Are there, a, are there a stream of, of gay rapists on their way to my house dispatched to rape me? I'm just trying to get into that mind space of a rapist. You know, you know, in uh, Hannibal. What's the guy's name? The, cap the other guy, you know, you can get into the headspace of psychotic people. That's what I can do for rapists now because I've done so many rape reviews. Guna squad en route. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm reminded of, oh my God, I'm reminded of, there was this guy that did this Vice video and it was about debt collection and he talked about going around to someone's house one time with a couple of like goons, I say an actual goons, you know, goons, hired muscle and he was like downstairs trying to take stuff back for the debt and he went upstairs to see what the other two were doing and then the guy whose debt they were collecting pinned down and they were raping him and they took pictures of it and they said, right. You pay up within the next week, or these get sent to your family. Would you believe it? He paid up. So, harsh strategy. Harsh strategy, but it seemed to work. So, bear that in mind. Anyway, I don't know. Swatted. This is when it just hit the news cycle. This is before it was drop Kiwi Farms. Now, let's talk about Hassan's hypocrisy here. Ooh. I have no words to say. This clip will speak for itself. Okay. Devil's haters are on a different level, to be honest. Yes, because she has done something that I did for the longest time that I realized I should have never done. Feed the trolls. It's not her fault. Also, the reason why she has trolls to begin with is because she's trans and outspoken. Okay? That's it. Notice how this community is demonstrably better when I don't fucking uh, engage with every single drama farming weirdo was trying to make a name for themselves by trying to make fucking YouTube videos being like, Hassan fucking sucks. Oh, On that note, here is the Willie Mac show. What's up, Willie Mac show? Hey, what's Ooh. up, Hassan? Um, not much. So I am not very familiar with what you do, but I believe you've done a couple videos about how dog yeah, shit I am, I think, you right? Be the trolls that will stay forever because they're, they're pathological. Their obsession is not normal. Their obsession is not something that... I mean, yeah, this just shows that Hassan is his own worst enemy and should follow his own advice, I guess. Um... I guess the difference would be, though, is that, yeah, this is him engaging with a drama farmer, which he's saying is bad, right? And he probably got so enraged that he just did it. Um, but I, I think there is a substantive difference between someone publicly making videos about you and engaging with them versus, you know, in, pu putting yourself in the spotlight more of online anonymous trolls that can just continue to fuck with you, you know, to the point of insanity but anyway sure he is he is not following his own advice he is engaging with someone who's a drama farmer when he says it's a bad thing to do um yeah sure that is that bit is true he seated but i don't know if it really correlates to the broader point he's making about not engaging with these swatters and stuff but yeah you know it's fucking a psalm what do you expect never stop until they kill you until they get you to kill yourself and it's not like a hidden thing this is their desired openly stated purpose okay <laughs> all right so let's move on to something more fun so, Devil's haters. Devil's haters. Hassan, first of all, needs to take his own advice. And second of all, comparing a transphobic hate crime to people making drama videos about you is brain dead. This was a disgusting response. I don't think, okay. <laughs> I don't think Hassan is saying that someone making a drama video about me is the same as a transphobic hate crime, okay? The point Hassan is making is, if you don't engage with trolls, you know, it's the, it's, he's giving the oldest advice on the internet. Don't feed the trolls, okay? This is a tale as old as time. Yeah, don't feed the trolls. If Hassan is feeding the trolls, he should follow his own advice, but it doesn't mean, it, it's not like, so, you know, 
I feel the word hypocrisy here is being used because it ties into a lot of other Hassan drama, like about his car, about his shirt, about his house and that kind of thing. But it doesn't okay, have like wonderful. the same quite flavor of hypocrisy. Where people. Thank if you very much for the five dollars. As trolls is because they are trans. Where do chud haters and trolls come from? Um, I don't. I mean, obviously, people in chat like to try and mind me up, and sometimes it works. I don't know if I've got like dedicated haters and stuff like that to the same degree as some of these people. It's because I'm such a nice guy, obviously. Um, but yeah, I don't. I I think hypocrisy is. Uh, I, yeah, is it hypocritical? Yeah, maybe it's like hypocritical in the strict sense of the word, but it's more so that, yeah, he's just not really following his own advice rather than him doing something where it's like you have stated X principle and you're doing Y because he's kind of doing it to himself. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He's kind of bringing it up on, him, up on himself. Like, you know, I think you should try not to get one guide because it can derail the stream or whatever. And it's okay to do it as a bit of content, but sometimes I get one guide and get too far into it. I don't know. Am I crazy? It just seems like it's not that big a deal. Anyway. And the reason I never said anything about this back then is because I needed the allies on my side for my own safety. I was fearing for my life. I wanted this man in my corner. He has a massive platform. But Hassan has... Hassan has a bit of a weird streak when it comes to trans people and criticism. Oh, so this clip. When he was getting criticized, during the Hogwarts oh, legacy oh, 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 oh. Oh, wait. of the end different. of that year. This is what he said. But I just, I truly feel like the backlash that will come of this is just not worth it because goddamn, trans posters can be very, very, very unhinged. And uh, God forbid, you don't want them coming. Because they're not going to go after fucking Nazis and shit. They're going to go after me if I play it. You know what I mean? They're going to be like, fuck you. So. Yeah, I mean, in that previous, yeah. I mean, I, I, it feels like Kevils felt that they were owed a... um that they were owed a response from them specifically that how they wanted about the Kiwi Farm stuff. And obviously, Hassan didn't give that response. I mean, okay. I understand Kevin's not liking it, but is it this big thing, a big okay, dunk on Hassan? Wonderful. I don't know, but man. I don't do really I care. How do I make money yeah. off depressed people? Kevin's Just does, picking guess, with you, but... but if I'm going to joke at you, I'm at least going to give you a buck. Thank you for the $5. See, look, that's the beauty of it. Sometimes my haters give me money. I love it. Anyway, thank you for the $5. Um, this here, again... Hassan's correct. I mean, yeah, it's a bit cringe to moan about a couple of trans coming at you for playing a game, I guess. But it is true that they were absolutely... And it was true. You remember they had the website set up. It got taken down fairly quickly. But they had this whole website set up where you could check and see if a streamer had played Hogwarts Legacy on stream. What it meant is they, they'd selected the category at any point Hogwarts Legacy on stream is what it actually tracked. But they had this whole website designed to track people that had played it. And there were people that played it that got shit from their, the trans community online. So, yes, that is exactly what happened during the course of the, uh, the thing. I mean, Hassan's L here really was, not, was just not caring about it and going, yeah, I want to play Hogwarts. I don't fucking care. Good luck to you. When, when I go after the Nazis, his response is, just ignore them. They'll never go away. And then when trans people criticize him, He's like, why aren't you attacking the Nazis? Why are you attacking me? And this is... Okay, I don't... <laughs> I'm being made to defend Hassan here. Hassan's point about the Kiwi Farm stuff is don't engage with trolls if they can... Because they're going to be able to anonymously lob stones at you from behind seven firewalls and you'll never be able to fucking grasp them. Right? That's point A. Point B is... Um, these trans people don't go after Nazis online, they go after people that play Hogwarts like me. Those are two different separate points that aren't contradictory. But Kevils has obviously twisted it to make it so there's some sort of contradiction there. Which I don't see personally. I don't see those as contradictory alternative positions. But, hey, what do we... if you think I'm wrong, let me know, chat. I, I, that's the way I see it anyway. It's actually one of the calmer ways that he has responded to criticism from trans people, even within his own community. But I just, I... So, for instance, here is Hassan's meltdown after he was criticized by a longtime trans community member for doing terrible in a debate against Christian, uh, right-wing TikToker Christian Walker. My issue as a trans person is the fact that you, a guy that isn't super well-versed on trans shit, brought on a known transphobe, knowing he might bring up transphobic shit, you aren't exactly a vosh in trans debates. I hope, I hope that the rest of your life is as horrible as it is every single day, okay? There you go. 
Suck my dick. I despise you. I despise you more than anything else on the planet. You are fucking cancer, okay? You are cancer in this community, and you're cancer in every community. Suck my dick. No, imagine you're- Now listen, look, here's the thing, right? Listen. The clip's funny, okay? Based Giga Chad Hassan. Here's the thing, though, right, that you need to remember with the clip is stuff like this, you need to think of it from Hassan's perspective because it's easy to sit here with our principles of thinking it's funny to mock someone that's, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, you need to be careful. <laughs> Okay, and say stuff like that. That's fine, but obviously Hassan himself has got the soy audience and the soy perspective, and he's not really living up to his own ideals and his own principles. Like if you piss him off, he'll cut loose with you know slurs, with kind of very edgy insults and stuff like that. Okay, so it's important. This is what I'm saying earlier. A lot of the other stuff that we've seen so far is stupid, but this. Whilst it is an old clip, and I think we've all seen it already, I think it's quite obvious that, yeah, this isn't really Hassan living up to his self-professed principles and ideals. And his audience would obviously tear someone else apart for saying the same sort of thing, right? You're sucking him off so much. Okay. <laughs> How on earth are you going to say, I literally just fucking covered the entire fucking drama between Hassan and Ethan Klein from pretty much start to finish. And I was extremely critical of pretty much every move he made in that entire drama, right? But now apparently I'm sucking him off. How am I sucking him off? And right now I'm giving a direct criticism of Hassan. How is that fucking sucking him off exactly? What are you on about? Fuck me. I'm going to start banning people soon. So fucking chill the fuck out. How on earth could you think that I'm sucking Hassan off when I'm saying two occasions here, okay, yeah, this and explaining the situation, and here I'm going, yeah, this is fucked from his principles. Fuck you. Spots to a member of a marginalized community that has an incredibly high rate of depression. Incredibly yes. Oh my God. I don't know what it is about you fucking retarded freaks that are coming here. Okay. Yes. Hassan is a hypocrite. I've said as much many times covering him in different fucking perspectives and different angles. What I'm saying is these are bad examples. Okay, someone can be a hypocrite and you don't like them and you think they do bad political commentary or whatever, but someone can still present you with examples when what they're saying is maybe correct or not even a hypo hypo hypocritical as someone is trying to tell you that it is. Okay, what the fuck is your problem that you're thinking that I'm simping or glazing Hassan when I'm just pointing out what I think about it, right? Some people, it's so wild. I'm not going to just sit here frothing at the mouth, shitting on someone endlessly, right? Because... I think that, uh, I, you know, I don't like them or something like that. I've never done that and I never will, okay? If there's a time where I happen to see someone that I don't like or don't like their content, I'll always say, okay, yeah, that's fair, that's good, that's correct, whatever, right? I even saw a Dark Viper tweet that I thought was based. And I only quote to it and I said, hey, he's actually correct about this. But I didn't bother because, you know, it's a bit too soon for me. And the lawsuit still may land on my doorstep. I don't know. But anyway, I will always say if I think that someone is correct or not correct or whatever about something. In this particular clip, yeah, Hassan is bad. It's an old clip. We've all seen it, sure. But Hassan is being shitty here and not living up to his own professed principles. Incredibly high suicide attempt rate. Is that over the most mild criticism? Like, that was such light criticism. Because Hassan himself has admitted repeatedly he is bad at debates. Like, this isn't exactly forbidden knowledge, so to speak. My issue is a trans- Now, here are my DMs with Austin Ox. What I said back then, August 11th. So, for the time frame here, the swatting was on August 5th. This is six days later. I said, I saw Hassan cover me on this, but I kind of disagree with him. Going this public basically means the cops will not fuck with me again. Hold on, NBC interview, they're calling. To which Austin Ox responds, he's got a long history with being swatted was happening to him a lot at one point. Good luck on it. I responded to Austin Ox. It went well. I really want to try and get this into American national coverage because in Canada, at least, it Please do not make me defend this Austin Ox guy. Oh my God. Dude. <laughs> it's looking like this is going to spark some big discussions. To which Austin Ox replies, Yeah, it's worth spotlighting, but does encourage more people to go after you specifically. Yes. 
That is true. That is just correct. I'm sorry, but it's true. What is wrong with that take? If you talk about online anonymous trolls fucking with you, it encourages them to do it more because they know they're affecting you. Is that... How is that wrong? How is that wrong? I don't understand how that's wrong. I hope wherever you move, the police will take it seriously this time when you tell them about swatting concerns. So... The thing, the common thread here, that I really hate, is people- Yes, Alanar, thank you. That is just correct. I don't know why we're acting like this is such a crazy take. Like, yeah, if you talk about it, they come after you more. Like, and, and we saw it play out with Keffels through the whole Kiwi Farm shit that was going on. People who are trying to take the context, or they seemingly ignore the context that this was a transphobic hate crime. The perpetrators of this we're using- Okay. It could well be a trans hate crime. I don't know one way or another. But it can be a trans hate crime. And talking about it can still encourage people to come after you more. That's just- that Both things could be true. It doesn't have to be one or the other. That's a false dichotomy. I believe they call that a false dichotomy in, philosoph in philosophication. Using the police as a weapon. We can go back to the original email. And they did a few things very, very, very specifically. They put my dead name in the email. They attached a photo of a handgun. They said that I killed my transphobic mother. They, they said in the email, trying to tell the cops I'm a pedophile, impersonating me, stealing my identity. This wasn't a normal swatting. In a normal swatting, there isn't identity theft. In a normal swatting, your devices don't get seized. When my computers were seized, I lost my livelihood. I had no choice. If I, I was told by my defense attorney that it would have taken months to get my devices back from evidence, I would have been unemployed. And that could be true. That might be true. It might be true that the press attention made the police act, but I, it's impossible to clarify one way or another. Um, and also, I... I'm pretty certain that wasn't one of the points of the GoFundMe's that some of the money was going to be used to replace the equipment. So, you know, it's like, do the GoFundMe, but then we also need to put pressure on the police to get the equipment back, even though I thought some of the money was supposed to be used to purchase equipment. So, yeah, again, this what I feel happens with this stuff too is Kefal like, says more stuff and then it just creates more of a sort of web of stuff and it's like well, what about this what about this what about this it creates more questions about what happened originally but you know i think i think and i'm seeing it in chat you have a point but i can't support the not glazing fair enough i see it in chat is that and you you people are the retards who are getting suckered in because you hate Assan so much you're not taking a step back and going okay well let me think about this from you take a step back a little bit and see what fucking is going on here and you know I think there's definitely like inconsistencies and little bits and pieces happening in this, which create further inconsistency with the previous tale. But a lot of it's going to slide because you're more focused on just shitting on hating Sarn, you know, and there's plenty of opportunity to do that. I'm sure we'll do some other retarded shit soon. That's going to totally justify some new wave of, uh, you know, criticism of him. But yeah, this is a bit mediocre, I guess I would say. The only clip that I've seen, which I've already seen a billion times, is the clip of him talking to that trans person and him being transphobic that one time. Normal swatting circumstance, and I, I use normal and scare quotes. The police show up, they scare the shit out of you, and they're gone. That's not what happened here. Uh, so. Good morning, Dr. Gibson. It's not I know this is irrelevant. Do you... <laughs> Kind of feels like the way now, doesn't it, eh? Do you have evidence of blood becoming face doxing you, Chud? Um, not not to hand, no. But basically what they did is there was a screenshot of a message I sent to someone and it was over my eyes and you can see the rest of my face and it was put out there. And it's not that big a deal, really, now, certainly not. But yeah, at a time it was obviously... And it wasn't even like I was worried about people seeing my face necessarily. It was just, you know, it was more just like... I didn't want my face to be out there. I'm not skipping anything.
I didn't want my face to be out there. They put my face out there. I just felt like, why the fuck would you do that? Like, clearly you're doing it because you think it's going to fuck with me in some way. I'm sure somewhere I've got some DMs they sent me. They're a fucking literal schizo. But anyway, that blood, that blood person, right? You realize they're a literal, like, fucking arsonist. They're like a convicted arsonist. They're fucking insane. They're nuts. They're crazy. So, you know. <sighs> anyway. I'm going to... Devil's haters. But I just... I... My issue is a trans person. Here's where things got confusing. So despite him saying that he never wanted to talk about this again, when I decided to escalate this into a campaign to get Cloudflare to drop Kiwi Farms, he actually retweeted that I was organizing a protest in front of the Cloudflare office in San Francisco. Now, I respect him for that, but here's the thing. Okay, can we be honest about something here? It could just be that it was the cause du jour. Is that the right term? It could be that it was the cause du jour at the time. And maybe Assam was doing it because it's just a retweet. And that was the right thing to do as a lefty was to support the drop Kiwi farm shit. Um, but also, you know, a lot of influencers want the Kiwi farms taken down because it benefits them on a personal level to, for it not to exist, right? For one reason or another. Fuck's sake, what's wrong with my thumbs? Can't move my glasses on my face probably. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Like it could just be, oh, uh, yeah, that's the lefty thing to do is support the Kiwi Farm sh and Kiwi Farm stuff, retweet. Maybe more personal motive. Impossible to know really. But again, is this supposed to be what is this supposed to prove? I don't really understand. So he made these comments, which, you know, were pretty reasonable, just saying, Hey, be careful about drawing more attention to yourself. But then he seemingly supported your attempts to get Kiwi Farms nuked from the internet. I mean, okay. What's the problem with that? Isn't that a good thing for you? No? It wasn't until I was winning and had the press on my side that he changed his position. This was... I guess it's possible that he just did it because, like I say, it was the political thing to do at the time. I don't know, but... Yeah, but there's a lot of motive being assigned to Hassan, which we just cannot possibly, possibly know. But, you know, pro probably, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> like I say, he probably did it because, oh, all the lefties are on this, are they? Retweet that, that looks good. Boom, job done. It was an optics move on his part. Yes, Ollie, that's what I'm talking about. All the chats. That's why based. he supported it. It was clout brain. He was the clout Probably. Chaser. And I was a trauma victim. I was the victim of a hate crime. Oh my God. And on that note, I want to talk about the consequences of letting the trolls win. Because if I followed Hassan's advice, I would have shut the fuck up. I would have just slinked away. I would have let all of those bad things happen to me. But you know what came out of following through? You know what came out of following through? with all of the things that I did, through all of the pain, all of the fear. I disagree with the news. The articles that say that the officers investigated themselves and they found that they acted appropriately. But as a response to what happened, to making it as public as I did, some huge things changed. Okay. Because of me coming forward with everything, Canada now has a national swatting database. It did not before. Because I spoke up publicly, this is a thing that will help every single Canadian swatting victim in the future. And if I followed the advice of Hassan Piker and just ignored it, didn't go public, that wouldn't have happened. Wait, was Hassan... Wait, wait a second. I'm not sure. Was Hassan saying don't go public at all? I thought his whole point was continuing to bring attention to it is going to cause you problems. Hmm. I don't think he ever said, don't go public at all about anything and shut the fuck up. I thought it was more so like, you know, continuing to bring attention to it is going to cause you problems, which obviously turned out to be true, but... Yeah, but was he saying shut the fuck up? Oh, that was Austin Ox's message, wasn't it? Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. 
Okay. But also, you know, there's other ways that you can raise um, these issues without a big, like, PR campaign too. And Asan is still correct that bringing more attention to yourself will cause you more strife and more problems. You're right, he didn't. Okay, yeah. It's difficult because I've only seen those short clips. I don't know the full, you know, sue me, okay? <laughs> I don't know the full extent of Asan's takes on the Keffel's fucking swatting situation. So I've only seen a couple of, literally those clips are all I've seen of him covering it. But um, but yeah, sure. I don't know if he was saying shut the fuck up. I think he was just pointing out that continuing to draw attention to it and feed the trolls will fuck you over, which is what happened. As a result of this incident, London's chief said a new system was put in place to flag locations or persons who have been the subjects of previous swattings. The information is maintained in a national database and available to any officer throughout the country to help guide the level of response. And because of talking about this, and making this as public as I did. The police were pressured into updating their Excellent. policies around transgender people in my good, hometown. Good, 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 good. Excellent. Good news. Excellent news. Now, do I think this is going to stop every incident in the future from happening? No. But the fact that I actually went forward with it. Despite also, I feel there's like a level of like, there's like a kind of, what's the right way to put this? It's like, one of the reasons that Kevl's made it so public was to push the GoFundMe and get a shitload of money from the GoFundMe. But now that's kind of sunk into the background and we're just focused on, look at all these positive changes that came out of it. When, first of all, Kevl's didn't know at the time that was happening, these positive changes were going to come out of it. Yeah, it's like she's rewriting history to make out like, oh, look at all these positive changes, though. Isn't it good that I came out so publicly about it? But it's like, yeah, but one of the reasons you came out so publicly was to fucking grift a ton of money from your audience. You were pushing this 100K fucking GoFundMe massively at the time, you know. But now you're, you're maybe, 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 maybe she'll go into it. Maybe she'll talk about it. I don't know. But the focus being here so heavily on the positive changes that came out of it, whilst not talking about the other things that were happening at the time, feels kind of like, Guilt by association. Um, yeah, lying by omission, sorry. Sorry, Christmas. The Christmas mind fog is still affecting me. Hmm. Anyway, let's continue. People telling me not to. I change things on a local level. I change things on a national level. That is going to help countless people. Now, the protest never got to happen. And this was posted to the Kiwi Farms homepage blocked what happened due to an imminent and emergency threat to human life the content of this site is blocked from being accessed through cloudflare's infrastructure here was hassan's second response oh here we go this could be something these are people who made it their lives mission because they're really fucking sick depraved twisted in an awful circumstance themselves oftentimes they make it their lives mission to like ruin other people they make it their lives mission to hurt other people as best as they can through repeated online cyberbullying Okay. Um, they were they were trying to do everything they can to, to you know get trans people to kill themselves, and they were successful on numerous occasions. Occasions that they also it really disgusts me that he's a he would say all this now, but then back then, he was just telling everyone to shut up. It went so far that a me but what is that? <laughs> Both things can be true. Well, true from a science perspective. I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that's a what that to me isn't a walk back. It could be true that the trolls are trying to do a bad thing in your opinion, whilst also recognizing that those trolls will continue to fight with you more. I don't know. I maybe maybe there's more to this that I'm not seeing, but you can help me if Bowl means in chat. But this doesn't really seem like a walk back to me. Like I what I would say is probably true is that he probably jumped on board because it, like I said, it was the du jour is du jour. Is that even the right terminology? It was the popular lefty thing in the moment to get on board with, wasn't it? The drop kiwi farm stuff, right? You could easily make content and farm clout out of doing the, yeah, let's drop kiwi farms, guys. It's a real bad site, isn't it? So I'm sure that played a part in his actions here. But I don't agree with this narrative that this is him walking back his original take. This is just him talking about it in a way that maybe benefits him, but... His original point still stands. Maybe, maybe he says something more that we're going to see, but... Immediately following the swatting, I was banned as a topic of discussion in his Discord server. The victim of a hate crime. 
so openly promoted. Like they saw that as a W until it was brought to the forefront by Keffels. Let, let's, be, let's be real, okay? Let's be clear. Right now, this website is for really designated, dedicated weirdos, right? For real dedicated fucking weirdos. But not having this website makes it even less accessible. It makes it harder to regulate. Yeah, also, the victim of the hate crime stuff. I mean, maybe under ca Canadians got fucking gay laws, okay? So maybe it is a hate crime over there. But, like, getting swatted is universal. Obviously, they used the means with which they thought would bring about the best success, which is to talk about the trans shit, I guess. But swatting is 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 a, just a crime. And could, they, you know, could they not have done it to you because you're a content creator just as much as because you're trans? I don't know. Like... What's, what's Ice Poseidon's fucking minority status? I don't know. <laughs> like it's because you're, you're a vocal content creator. I don't know. Does anyone know about Canadian law to stay? I'm fucking clueless on the hate crime side of it. But I think this is being used as a, uh, you know, like, a, oh, yeah, well, let me add a bit of extra. Oh, a lefty not liking the hate crime victim or something. Certainly, but it also makes it even less accessible. So you have to be like really just like fucking invested in this. Like, absolutely, incredibly invested in this. Be able to find it, to seek it out. Because Kiwi Farms made it accessible to join in. Yeah, like, no shit. But it's frustrating, because once the press was really big, These are people he suddenly made. changed his tune. They're a private company, and they privately decided, you know what, it's in our best interest not to fucking uh, host it. So why are you still sucking that private company's cock? Or why are you still defend? Why are you still attacking the private company? I'm sorry that, like, the, the fucking doxing swatting website was taken down. I, I, I'm sorry that that harms your, your... Remember? Never... The same as Sonny was like, never talk about this fucking ever again. Is now being a cheerleader. Uh, free speech sensibilities that do not even really exist either. They're a private company and they pri But this, of all of the things that he said in his response... I mean, yeah, obviously, you know, this is a very... Like I say, the main reasons that Asana is probably talking about it is he benefits from having Kiwi Farms taken down because he fucking hates the trolling shit. And it was popular to do as the lefty d cause du jour. That is the correct someone just said in chat. The cause du jour of the time. Um, you know, and he was probably just fucking pushing it because it helped his, his channel or whatever and, and it was content, etc. But I don't know if this really goes against what he was saying before. Yeah, I don't know. This just seems this seems like a bit of a stretch to paint this hypocrisy narrative when, you know, or act like he's walking it back from what he said before when the truth to me at least and what I can see here is just that yeah, he he, you know, jumped onto a cause that would benefit him at the time because that's kind of what Hassan does, right? But anyway, let's continue. Was the most tragic. Because Hassan predicted my future. But I didn't think it would come from his community. Or some shit like that. But that's what these guys do. They, they know how it works. They know how misinformation works. They know that people will be motivated. They want to make sure that you are just like not a good person to be around. Because no one wants that stench. No one wants that stink on them. No one wants like a psychotic fan base of, you know, designated hate watchers to constantly be monitoring your every movement. That's how they take away your allies. That's how they take away your friends. That's how they make you like a, a, a bad par a pariah. Even if you've done nothing wrong. Now, if you've been following with my content recently and you watched the stream that is now labeled on my channel this needs to fucking stop a big part of the reason i had a spiral and that i needed to go to rehab it wasn't just kiwi farms it was because of people in his community it was because of big leftist content creators who didn't <laughs> Is it just me? Well, every time there's some new street for Gavin, there's some new villain that actually was behind the scenes contributing to everything. Now, oh, well, also, there is another group of people. This is, guys, this is what happens in fucking Star Trek and Star Wars and retcon. The entire thing's getting retconned. And actually, the true villain, there was some new villain you never even knew about before. And actually, they're responsible for this too. Bro, oh my God. <laughs> am I crazy? Am I insane here or, or what? Somehow Palpatine survived. 
didn't do the research and took the bait from sock puppet accounts run by Kiwi Farms users intent on isolating me from the left, intent on destroying my reputation, on making me be the toxic person they wanted me to be. So I had no allies left. And so many people on the left, they took the bait. I expected better from them, and I was disappointed. But through this experience, I learned and I grew. And now I don't expect better from them. I mean, and I you know, I think we learned through the Ethan Klein thing that Assange's community is filled with fucking freaks who will just say the most insane, unhinged shit. Um, obviously, my community is filled with angels who would never say a bad thing about anyone. So that's good. But no, listen, if there's something crazy, that's fine. Like, obviously, people say crazy shit. I think the thing with this is it's about what is Assange's professed principles and ideals, right? That's the thing you need to bear in mind with this. It's easy to look at stuff and just think, yeah, it's funny, it's based, etc. And I've seen a couple of screenshots, which, you know, I don't know exactly what's going to come up here because I haven't pre-watched, okay? Why did it take you so long to see? What do you mean to take you so long to see? It's not as if I'm. It's not as if like I've been sat here thinking, yeah, Assange's community is all full of lovely people. I've been pointing out crazed freaks in Assange's community for probably like a, over a year now, longer even. I mean, every community's got fucking weirdos in it. I don't know, like, but the the reason that Assange, the reason that Assange is worthy of like a specific strand of criticism. Oh, sorry, my bad. I thought you meant me. My bad. Okay, I'm overreacting. I need another energy drink. Clearly, well. <clears throat> The reason is, is now it's politically expedient to point all this out, the shit on Hassan, to benefit her channel. That's the reality of it. I'm getting one guide, incorrectly. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm sure that there's plenty of fucking weirdos that say crazy shit in Hassan's community. The problem is for Hassan, <clears throat> is what his professed views and principles are, and whether what we see aligns with what he says. Because obviously Hassan is is the, you know, you need to keep your community in check person, right? And will criticize others. Like one classic example with recent drama is um, when he went off on XQC because XQC's chat was being mean to him, right? Yeah, so. paved the way, building our own community. That's not a part of their entire sphere. Now, now we get into the fallout how all of this turned out the way it did. Here we go. Hassan Dick Ryder's being transphobic as fucking chat. I'm not surprised. Oh. Like, we saw how Hassan reacted when trans people criticize him. Ooh. He gets fucking weird Oof. really oh. fast. <laughs> we banned two addiction chambers thus far I've seen on Twitch. Yeah. No, I expect that. that that's been a big thing from his community specifically. You know, everyone on the left, they're all pro-mental health until it comes to drug addiction. And then suddenly they turn into fucking Hitler. It's insane. That is my metric now for the left. If you come into chat and you shame me for the things I did to struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, you're not a fucking leftist. You're a LARPer. I mean, like, while that is true, that's true for the entirety of the left online, is they're all... They're all hardline individualists over whatever the issue they're concerned with, right? It's, um, you know, whether it's drugs or, what, you know, there's always some issue that they become, uh, you know. The classic one is Nazis. The classic one is Nazis, you know. Oh, Nazis, we should do X, Y, and Z to a Nazi. They're like, you know, the idea is they're fundamentally bad, just for having the wrong ideas about something. The right ha hates drug addicts just as much. Yeah, that's the point. The right hate drug addicts because they see it well. I don't want to speak for every single person on the right, but like broadly on the right, individual responsibility is considered, you know, on a, on a higher kind of level. They put, you know, individual responsibility is a big part of being on the right in some fashion, right? Be it from like more center-right libs who maybe have a softer version of this all the way through to 
um, you know, conservatives, low government intervention, et cetera, et cetera, right? But lefties normally would profess that they, they tend to go in the other direction, that it's about their circumstances, the state should help them, um, you know, they put less onus on personal responsibility, and that gets more extreme the further left you go, broadly speaking, right? But then some lefties will have some issues where they'll normally profess state intervention, the opposite of personal responsibility, but then given the right circumstances, everything is immediately the fault of the individual and they should pull themselves up by the bootstraps, right? But this is just a common problem on the left. But anyway, let's see what Kevin's got to say about it. When the white leaf sites were first made, I ditched looking at Twitch chat. Yeah. So actually the white leaf site that I have plays a part in all of this too. Oh. The reason that I moved to white leaf in the first place was because white leaf has IP banning abilities. <gasps> YouTube chat, Twitch chat, they don't have that. Oh my God. But because the white leaf brand is so associated Wait, with Nivosa. Gosh, <gasps> people started turning on me simply for using white leaf. And I'm going to get into that in a bit. We have a few more people to talk about. Holy shit. Addiction isn't dealing with a problem, it's running from it. Yeah, no fucking shit, Sherlock. What is... What Are you fucking dumb? What, what do you mean by... <laughs> yeah, just such a... I, I fucking, I love these idiots. Wait, sorry, I, mi I missed this banger from Queeman. Is Hitler the best example for drug addiction? Yeah, wasn't he fucking um, into something? I can't remember. Was it heroin or was that Sherlock Holmes? Sorry, guys. I'm just mixing up Sherlock Holmes and Hitler. I do that quite often. So much. Meth, okay. It's a medical issue. No, 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 yeah, they're really, it, it was like how Hassan was trying to condescendingly explain how the victim of a hate crime should react to being hate crimed. It's fucking disgusting. Okay, th this, so now we're getting to like, like, we just watched the clip. All Hassan was pointing out is a truth that if you talk about it, they'll fuck with you more. I'm not, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. Like, just because you were a so-called hate crime, which you may have been, I don't fucking know the law, doesn't mean that saying you shouldn't talk about it extensively is wrong. But then obviously he jumped on board when it was the du jour issue of the day. Anyway. It's just standard good advice. If you get if you get swatted, you should do your best to minimize public attention to it. You should try and deal with it privately, and so on and so forth, right? That's that's the basic kind of process that generally people want to follow. Yeah, the hate crime shit is gay, but you know, that's Lefty shit, isn't it? Oh, I've got hate crimes, and that gives you more victim points. Hold on a sec. Make sure to like the stream if you haven't liked the stream yet. We still have a bunch to get through. Yeah, we're about halfway through. We're doing quite well, I think. But we're doing pretty good. I think we're doing well. He wasn't telling you how to react to being hate crime. He was giving you advice on how to react to being swatted. You can't uncouple these two things. Yes, you... <laughs> It was clear that he was saying, oh my God, okay, I don't want to have to explain it again. <laughs> you absolutely can decouple these two things. Why can't you? Why can't you decouple the two things? Of course you can. It's always like Kevils is out to like, them saying something makes it so. No, you can. Of course you can. You absolutely can. You, it'd be both simultaneously true that you hate grind and you should deal with swatting in a, in a more discreet way so as not to invite more people to do it. Like if someone gets stabbed, and they die, you can't just say, you can't just talk about giving advice if you get stabbed in a non-fatal way. These are two different things. Like, Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up. No, if someone, if someone gets stabbed, <clears throat> you can give advice to people that may prevent them from getting stabbed again. Obviously, if they're dead, they're dead. But if someone gets stabbed, you can say, okay, this is the behavior that they did that led up to the stabbing. If they'd have done something differently... I don't know, that's such an odd thing to, to bring into the forehead, this idea. Oh my god. Yes, you can absolutely give advice about avoiding getting stabbed in general, even if someone is stabbed and is killed. You can absolutely do that. The swatting was done as a hate crime. Holy fuck.
Okay. Make sure I like the stream on YouTube and we'll get going in a second. Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, you know, the fact that people get swatted and there's no hate element whatsoever demonstrates that, yes, of course, a swatting can be done absent of any hate crime ideology behind it. You know, the swatting is what is being addressed, not the broader issues around it. But anyway. <clears throat> You've said too many nice things. Can you give me a psalm bad so I know where you stand? Sure. Listen, I understand that some of this might seem like, oh, just defending Assange's art. I'm only defending him against what I feel are unreasonable comments and attacks on Assange. Right? What is true and what has always been true is that Assange does absolutely jump on causes because it benefits his public perce perce perception, persona. And... um. Yeah, he, he absolutely will engage in like edgy words against minorities in, in, in the heat of the moment whilst professing to be very progressive and woke on issues, right? Do you know what it is? Oh my God, I feel like, I feel like all those people that are getting asked to condemn Hamas. That's what I feel like right now. You go on to talk about some bad shit Israel has done and it's like, well, have you condemned Hamas though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh. Why are people so toxic like that? It's just kind of a given, given the topics. So, this starts around. Am I okay? Also, like, am I crazy here, or just is what I said before not correct as well? That this is all just um, drama, which, you know, maybe there's something here somewhere to talk about, but it's been blown up into this big drama stream in order to, uh, you know, capitalize on viewership, which is, you know, again, I'd have a problem with that fundamentally, but the problem is the reason that's being done is massively overstated. And there isn't actually that much here, to me at least, that I think is is worthy of this big fanfare. It's kind of weak. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's pretty weak, yeah. And the time I got back from rehab and I messaged Austin Knox, hey, are you around? And he said, what's up, Clara? And I said, I sent this message to Hassan. I did DM him. He didn't get back to me. I'm really upset with his mods. And this is the message that I sent to Hassan. Hassan, do you have a moment to talk? There's something I really need to talk to you about involving your moderators. They are engaging in actively harmful behavior. And I want to see if this can be resolved without escalating into drama. No! And I told Austin Ox privately. They are spreading lies about me that originated from Kiwi Farms and are actively being harmful. <gasps> da, da, da. Here we go. He responds to me. He's not great about responding to DMs. And I said, he's not. I'm messaging Frogan too. Austin Ox said, I'm not a mob, but I can forward to some of the ones I know if you want. But if it's something they're posting on Twitter and not as mods in his chat, that's not something he controls. And I said, it's all in his Discord. Austin Knox responds to that. Oh yeah, if it's harmful stuff in the Discord, maybe just send him a screenshot. So let's go over the Frogan stuff now. My DMs with Frogan. Oh my God. Jesus. No. <laughs> Guys, we wanted to skip this bit. Uh, I'm not sure if I can quite stomach defending Frogan as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> However, fortunately, and I think this may be where we start to get into some of the stuff where I'm a bit more like, you sure? Is these people, the thing you need to bear in mind coming into this, okay? It's really important you bear this in mind. Whether or not you or I care about what's being said is kind of irrelevant, okay? That's not really the matter at hand here. This is a big thing for me that I'm really thinking about moving forward now is would, like having your own principles is fine, but allowing people to live by your principles when they don't themselves is crazy. And I think that these people all profess to be very fucking woke. I'm sure at one time or another, they have complained about the way that other communities have talked about them. Right? I'm sure there's plenty of examples of that. That's the key point here is it's all about what they do and believe, not what we think. Do you see what I mean? So Frogan is someone who I'm fairly certain would be very bothered if other communities were talking shit about her and would demand some action on it, right? Haven't got the evidence to hand. I'm going to assume that's, that's true. Um, I'd imagine that that probably is the case. And, you know, we'll see what they say here. But also we maybe end up defending them. So we'll see. We will see. <clears throat> Yeah, Frogan cried on stream because Mizkif, um <laughs> Frogan was crying on stream because Mizkif commented on the fact they'd um, been recommended for some streamer award and they maybe weren't eligible. 
and Frogan cried about it. But then, when people were slaughtered in a terrorist attack, they referred to it in, uh, what was it? I believe they called it a revolution or something like that. Stylo in chat says, the only good thing about Frogan is that she's wearing the fucking hijab. Okay. Thank you for that. I disavow. Okay. So. I said, hi, Frogan. Do you have a moment to talk? This was on April 26th, 8.58 p.m. She said, hey, in the middle of moving right now, so I can't VC, but can text. What's up? And here's what I said to Frogan. I wanted to talk about Hascord. I'm really upset to see moderators there spreading rumors about me that were literally lifted from Kiwi Farms about me not going to rehab. I found out this isn't new, and moderators were spreading rumors about me not doing a lawsuit and stealing money last year. This is very upsetting, Ooh. and I just needed to reach out. I know not everyone has to like me, and there are legitimate criticisms people can make of me, but these are literally from Kiwi Farms. I look up to Hassan. Obviously not anymore. <laughs> and there are a few online communities I feel safe in. Ooh. I don't want to start drama or do callouts, but I needed to address it. Good luck with moving. I know how stressful it can be. Oh my god. So I think that wasn't on the nose enough for me. I think that Keffel should have said at the end, I know how stressful moving can be, especially at the barrel of a gun, especially at the barrel of a police officer's weapon, because I'm getting swatted twenty four seven by Kiri Fox. I'll show you how she responded to this. Oh. You have to realize that when you're an online personality, there are going to be oh, people no. that like you and some- No! Oh, I can't do this, fam. <laughs> I tell you one thing that is telling about this stuff. I'm trying desperately to find a way to shit on Frogan because I cannot do it. I cannot do it. <laughs> oh, okay. Look, Frogan is correct. Yes, to say to ignore them. Okay. Yes, obviously that is the correct advice. It's just funny to me that all these fucking lefties are saying this privately to people behind the scenes when it's inconvenient for them to actually have to face up to some of this shit. Right? It's like, oh, just ignore it. Don't worry about it. Right? I'll say it openly. Yeah, fucking ignore these people. Who fucking cares if some if retards are talking shit about you in some Discord somewhere? Right? It doesn't really matter that much. Like, people make this big deal of going hunting out all instances of them being criticized on the internet and complain about it. Right? Yeah, obviously you should ignore them. But call me crazy. I don't imagine that Frogan is someone that would come out and, and say that publicly. You know, I doubt that in the heat of getting a load of shit, they would come out and say, yeah, I should probably just ignore it. Or other people should just ignore it. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Maybe I'm crazy, but I've got a gut feeling that's the case. <sighs> that don't. Ignore them. You went out of your way to name search yourself in the server and are sending me stuff from months oh ago. Oh my god, she's so, Frogan is so correct. Frogan is so correct on this point. That is what people do. Okay, yes, people wonderful. do name search themselves in Discord. It's stupid. Oh my god. Thank you very much for the two dollars. One, but bear in mind, okay, again, we need to be careful here because we're going off our own views. I'm going off my own perspective on this. My personal perspective is you should not go and search yourself. You should ignore this insane hatred about you, da 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 da, da right? I do not believe that that is Frogan's like publicly stated position. It's very rich for Frogan to say this privately, whilst I think my belief is that publicly would have a very different perspective. And I'm certain that there's cases where, you know, she is um, talking about the public shit. But yeah. Oh, quite frankly, I don't understand why you even come around in the server since you don't like Hassan or me for that matter. Anyways, according to messages from your mod signal chat that people have sent me, I know you say I gatekeep Hassan from people, but the only time I ever will is when I say keep him and the community out of your drama.
This is the moment I lost all respect for Hassan and his community. All I asked for was a crumb of compassion. As someone who, <laughs> quite frankly, I don't need to be condescended to. Also, by... another thing I'll say as well is, you know, with Frogan's professed kind of like progressive ideology. Like this. So here's my problem with what Frogan is saying. Okay. Right. Frogan not saying this because it's like a genuinely held belief to the point where they would state it publicly, especially a position where it's against them or something like that. Right. Frogan is saying it because it's inconvenient to have to deal with this drama. Right. So they're trying to discreetly no, I'm not just trying hard to disagree. I agree with what they're saying. The problem is the fact that they're doing this privately behind the scenes because they don't want to deal with this bullshit rather than it being, in my opinion, a genuinely held perspective that they would consistently state regardless of who it was that was being attacked by a certain community, right? Okay? Get it? Get it? Okay? Hold people to their own principles, especially ones they state publicly, not ones they can just weaselly go behind the scenes and go, oh, yeah, well, you should just ignore people talking about you like that, shouldn't you? Okay, Rogan, is that okay? Who's most I'm notable my best, achievements okay? <laughs> in her live streaming career is being a Hassan mod and winning oh. an award for not being a big streamer. Ooh, oh, I didn't even qualify yo. for the Rising Star Award. She has absolutely no idea what it's like to be in my position. And I did like her. I gave her a hug at TwitchCon. Oh, what? Hey? But she's also lying. Don't worry about that. Ignore this is that what bit. she said about me while I was in rehab in Hoscord. After my friends convinced me to go to rehab so I didn't take my own life, while I was getting active treatment, she's sitting in Hassan's Discord, shit-talking me. <laughs> she's just a snake. It's just incredibly two-faced. I thought saying the R word was okay now because of Keffels. I don't... Okay. I, I'm, I'm assuming this is about the time that Keffels started calling everyone a retard. Basically, there was this thing that happened where in the lead up to Keffels going to rehab, they started going like crazy on stream and people were calling them based because they were calling people retards and they were going to go autistic people and shit like that. And I think when the rehab thing happened, that got rationalized as... Oh, Keffels was just in a bad way because of the drug stuff and was a bit fucking loopy. Hence why they started calling everyone retard. So I'm assuming this is in relation to that drama, I guess, as, as to why they're saying this. Um, I don't really understand what is being said here. I guess maybe this is a this is mockery. I don't really know. What, I don't understand what this is. Like, this could be a, a genuine sense statement of, of truth, of, of like... Related to the drama at the time, or it could be them trying to mock Keffels. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, it's hard to decipher, right? Like exactly what is happening here. This could be mockery. This could be a commentary on the drama. It could be a bit of both. Who fucking knows? Anyway, let's continue on. Maybe there's more. It's obviously mocking. I'm happy to accept that, but how so? What do you mean? Do you mean they're saying, oh, Keffels, are they saying Keffels is a retard? Or are they saying, I don't, okay. I had never said anything mean to her before. And I don't even know what signal mod chat she's referring to, but I know how she got it. We have to talk about Solio. Because Solio is my former head moderator and the person who leaked Ooh. the mod signal chats. Oh. Solio, uh oh. Okay, what is this? I've seen, I've seen. I think logs of this. Keffel's making some fucking edgy tw messages or something. I've seen a couple of things. Is that what that's from? I was wondering where these leaks were coming from. Solio. So. Okay, in those communities, it's never okay to say retard. So it's mocking her usage is my takeaway. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know. Maybe. I want to know more about Solio. To give context to who Solio is. I used to be friends with Mike from PA. <laughs> what the fuck happened to Mike from PA?
What happened to this dude? Hey? And Mike from PA had Solio as one of his moderators. <gasps> oh, not Solio! <laughs> when I got a white leaf site, and when I started... He's still streaming to a pretty big audience. Okay. I wasn't talking about streaming career. I was talking about something else. I was talking about something more visual. Okay, let's put it that way. There's this dude... <laughs> Is there no fucking hairdressers where this guy lives or something? Is there a fucking... What's it called? Is there a hairdresser desert where this fella lives? What the fuck? Started associating with Vosh. Mike started pressuring Solio. And honestly, just attacking him. One time, Solio joined a VC in Mike's Discord. And Mike's response was, Hey, Va hey, now that you're a Vosh orbiter, when are you going to put the hit piece out on me? <gasps> Just publicly oh, shaming him. Goodness me. Solio's eventual response was to disassociate from me. But before he did, he said something very strange to another one of my mods. He told another one of my mods to watch out because I might lead him on. Now, for context, oh. Solio is um, almost 30 years old and a virgin. Maybe n not anymore if he's not good for him. <laughs> but Yo, okay. Regardless of anything else, I love the fact that we're dropping this guy's a virgin. That is the ultimate hater behavior. That's based. Who else is a virgin? Anyway, listen, when you told me they were your moderator, I assumed as much in the first place, but that's pretty funny. Oh, by the way, this person I got beef with, they haven't had sex yet. Unlucky. <laughs> At the time, he was very much an incel. If you don't know, Solio has a history of this. So Solio's claim to fame online is getting into a fight with Destiny two years ago. And he's this. in this video, Lefty Fan begs Hutch to disown Destiny. Oh my in god, debate. I remember this fucking debate. Classic. I want to show you some of the old DMs because Solio's grudge against Destiny ended up being used. I he basically used me as a vehicle for his grudge against Destiny and ratcheted up the conflict between us. So this was March 23rd, two days before. Um, okay. Gotta... Mm. This is kind of like a strategy that I've seen with Kefals. And we've seen it in this exact video. But it's this idea that, again, it's the fucking retconning. It's the retcon. It's the fucking retconning again. Oh, there was some other unseen force that actually existed that contributed to this issue. Like, yeah, it is retcon. I'm going to call it retconning. Okay. Drama retconning. Kefels is shitting on this guy like she didn't tee him up to shit on Destiny. Well, yeah, I mean, we're probably going to get quite limited leaks, right? But this is another retcon. This idea of like, oh, yeah, well, actually, there was this other person and they were geeing me up to do this thing. Palpatine's returned again. But a Kiwi Farms thread after Destiny was banned. And I need to say this right now. I'm not blaming Destiny. Forget for me getting a Kiwi farm thread. Destiny was also a victim of that site. His family was doxxed because of that site. To blame him for that would be victim blaming. Wasn't there a thing that happened where Destiny was blamed for sharing? Was it Keffels? It was something like Destiny shared a thread of Keffels from Kiwi Farms in DGG. And the point was, this is where the hate is coming from. Not my community. And then that was used to attack Destiny at the time. And now there's this complete walk back of anything to do with like Destiny being involved in the Kiwi Farm stuff. <laughs> it's all retconning all the way down. <clears throat> Destiny sent people to Anna's thread, shared anti Kevils art that originated there. Honestly, this whole stream is just a part of it, at least, is, is an effort to retcon a bunch of pre-established drama with new lore. And then what, we're supposed to act like that's the new story now, and that's always been the case.
All I can say without delving into every single fucking retcon that we're seeing is you have to go back and just watch the original drama to see exactly what happened at the time. Yeah, I'm just thinking as well, like, I feel like this kind of happened with me as well, because obviously there was the P word thing, where she called me a P word. And then it was, oh no, uh, DJ Mule actually said this to me in DMs, and that's why I said that. Was that a little retcon? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, the problem is, is that a lot of this stuff now, there's the, you know, people just, people just don't, <laughs> it's going to take like some commentary guy, Willie Mac show, hint, hint, to come along and I think and to break this down extensively, because there's so many little things where it's like, you, you know, I've got a rough idea of some of this stuff just from having gone through it, but we're talking like over a year ago and without going back and viewing it all it's going to be impossible to really figure out what's what from one strand or another in these various dramas that we're going over. So someone who can actually go back, watch it all, and create an edited video would probably be the best way to deal with this. Can we get Willie Mac to expose LSF mods? Maybe. And that's part of what I apologize to him for. But what Solio did was use me to try and hurt him. And then when Solio felt slighted by me for being friends with Vosh, he linked the he leaked the signal chats to I guess anyone he could in order to further alienate me from other people on the left. So Solio was saying, I enjoy modding for you. Being able to fuck over Destiny and any of his cockroaches is an added bonus. This was March 24th. You're a copy paste in Hassan's chat. Oh. No. Yeah. Hassan mentioned Destiny being banned, and then the chat started spamming this. Also, congrats on the follow. Because Wait, Hassan what was, what was unfollowed me all? immediately following the conflict this. Wait, what was that? Rip Bozo, careful sends of regards. You're a copy-paste oh, in Hassan's banned. chat. Yeah, Hassan mentioned Destiny being banned, and then the chat started spamming this. Also, congrats on the follow. Because Hassan followed me immediately following the conflict with Destiny. This is where Wop Goblin gets involved because Wop Goblin is um, Wop Goblin in again? every single conflict for some reason. I can't. Why does this chick have new drama every single day? She doesn't. That is a lie. No, it's not a lie. There's no, there is no drama here. There is literally no drama here. Okay. Oh, hey, Kristen Ark, how's it going? There is no fucking drama here. This is, this is like, <laughs> what's it like? It's like, you know, when you go to the, the fridge freezer, the refrigerator, what do you call it in America? The cold, the old cold box. When you go to the old cold box and there's nothing to eat, right? You got nothing to eat and you're like, damn, I need to eat. I've got to eat today. So what you do is you go, okay, we've got one egg. We've got a bit of butter, got some tomatoes. Oh, what else have we got? I've got a bit of leftover ham. Oh, anything else? Uh, yeah, some uh, potatoes. Some uh, old cooked potatoes. Okay, well, let's, uh, fuck it, chop that up. Put it in the fucking, in a, in a pan. Fry it up. There we go, that'll do. That's what it is. It's, it's pulling together all of these different strands of nothing, essentially, to create a drama. Oh, it's called a fridge. Okay, my bad, sorry. I didn't realise. It's creating a drama omelette where there's no where there's no drama in the fridge. Okay, that's that's the way that I'm thinking of this. There's not really much here. There's not much meat on the bone. It's oh, Frogan was kind of shitty in a DM. Um, Hassan originally said I shouldn't had, I shouldn't give attention to the doxers and then went on to praise the drop kiwi farm stuff. Da da da. It's all pulling it together to try and create some broader narrative that just doesn't really exist. If you like Keffels enough, you'll be on board with it. If you hate Hassan enough, you'll be on board with it. Um, you know, I do think there's stuff here which, yeah, sure, Hassan's a hypocritical, woke guy that doesn't really live up to that. You know, people here are professing that, oh, yeah, it's actually bad to... Uh... 
you know, to, to pay attention to trolls and you should ignore them whilst publicly having different perspectives. Sure. So I don't think I want to sit here and act like all these people are just based. Like, Frogan isn't based. The sign isn't based. It's just that some of these attacks, I don't think, are that substantive. Um, but it's been painted as a much higher thing in order to solicit a bunch of fucking views. And hey, it worked. Listen. The one thing you can't deny is it clearly worked. Kevl's had, like, what? Thousands of viewers doing this live. So... Yeah, Kevl's isn't based. No one is based. No one is based but me. Yeah, you could say this drama is just leftovers. Am I right? Whoa! <laughs> can't avoid this fucker. By the way, this is a recent screenshot. Apparently, Wop Goblin was in such a... They were fearing so much. I got that from chat. Being targeted I saw that by from chat. They not Major only unlocked their account, but revealed their first name. Incredibly terrified behavior. So, this was an October 5th tweet, and these are mod signal chat messages. So I know that Solio sent these over to Wop Goblin. So I discovered why Keffels has no problem with Vosh's pedophilia. My jaw dropped when I read the second picture. She's actually so vile. And let me, let me read these to you. you. You can tell that this was Solio because it's searching for Hassan. He was grabbing anything that he could in order to attack me. But... As someone, as a trans person, a very visible trans person on the internet. Yeah, I have gallows humor. I get accused of being a pedophile all the fucking time. And sometimes when you get accused of vile things on a regular basis, you start coping with it. With weird I mean, yeah, like, look, let's be real. These are just fucking jokes, okay? It's quite obvious what's going on here. I don't think these are anything that are that... Bad. I mean, this is typical lefty fucking pole clutching over stupid jokes. Fucking jokes. So I said my racism is central to my pedophilia. For instance, I would not have sex with Hassan Piker, even if he was a child, because he is Turkish. <laughs> That's funny. Like. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny, okay. I... Starlo says, I wouldn't be too sure. I have less faith. Okay, I'll take that into advisement. That's a funny joke, though. I don't even know what anti-Turkish racism looks like. Like, I, I never grew up around any Turkish people or people who hated Turkish people. I have no concept for, or context. It's such a shitpost. So the second, the second message here, tweeting, I only have, I only have sex with girls with small breasts so I can close my eyes and pretend I'm having sex with a preteen and immediately losing 50,000 followers. Okay, that's funny too. Like, yeah, is it a fucked up joke? It's obviously a fucked up joke. But how can you not tell that this is a joke? This one didn't land. Okay, let's keep going. Someone who said it's not a joke. I mean, the point of the joke here is just the idea that you would do something so insane and absurd to lose a mass of your following for, like, no good reason, right? I don't know what the rest of the context is here, but... I mean, you know, either these this is a genuine statement of pedophilic intent, which I don't think is true, or it's just some edgy joke. So, jokes are oh supposed God, to be funny now? We well, go. I just laughed, and I see a lot of people who think it's funny. So, I don't know. You're a fucking Twitch chatter. You should suck my inverted penis. Oh, oh yo! The Twitch VOD. Yo, okay, I disavow. That's bad. You shouldn't say that. I disavow that completely. You should not use slurs, and you certainly should not talk about medical procedures in such a way. That's that's just disgusting to me. Not because of the trans thing. I think trans women are beautiful. I'm just talking about using it in such a dis you know horrible way as an insult is bad. Um, okay. Where are my trans queens at? Preferably without the procedure. Let's be real. Okay, go on. Chaser logic. Chaser logic, literally. Okay. Okay. I'm trans. Oh, really, my queen? Tell me more. And I've had the bottom surgery. Oh, okay. Uh, anyway, nice to meet you. Good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> I'll see you later, okay? Chaser logic. Let's go. We're leaning into it. 
We're leaning into it today. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, look, one thing I want to say before we get into this. Again, as I always say, okay, I don't really care about, like, toxicity in the community, okay? Communities can, whatever. It's not my personal concern. However, this is about Hassan. What is Hassan's view on toxicity within communities, okay? That's the key thing to remember here. Hassan is a big figure that talks quite a lot about toxicity in other communities. I mean, to the point where he got mad at XQC because his chat was shitting on him when they were having a debate, okay? So, I think it's very important to recognize that Hassan's view is that it should be dealt with harshly. That is Hassan's perspective on community toxicity, okay? So, once again, you should always hold the person up to their own principles rather than look at it as, well, what do I think about it, right? Because I'm pretty sure most people here are not going to care that much about toxic communities in and of themselves. But if someone professes to care about it and they don't take action on their own toxicity in their own community, well, yeah, that is pretty fucking hypocritical. Anyway, that's my thought process initially on this. So I just, what I don't want is people to feel like Hassan, like I don't want Hassan to get like a free ride because he is like gigabase letting people say crazy shit in his community when he would shit on others for allowing them to do the same thing in their community, right? God damn it. Okay. I want to talk about the toxicity of Hassan's community. Don't worry, this VOD will be public over on YouTube. But Hassan has a rule in his community called no free clout. Ooh. And he applies this to me. He applies this to Vosh. He applies this to Destiny. I'm sure there are a handful of other people. And it basically means that you're a leftist that has criticized him. And he cannot tolerate that. He gave so much publicity to people on the right. From debating Charlie Kirk to debating Christian Walker, to platforming yeah. Andrew Tate. This is, yeah, yeah. He has given so much publicity and he has pushed back against people on the right he disagrees with. That is true. But when it comes to people who have beliefs that, is, that are more similar listen, to his own. God, that is, God, was just correct about that one, that's for sure. He absolutely has done this to the point where I remember there's like, do you guys know who Kay Swiftly is? Do you guys know who Kay Swiftly is? That is a very deep cut, I would say. <laughs> oh, hey, Ike, how's it going? Yes, Kay Swiftly. I'm sure you remember Kay Swiftly. Kay Swiftly was someone who was uh, a streamer back in the George Floyd protests. They jumped straight on board with the, um, like, oh, yeah, George Floyd. It was like, <laughs> oh, George Floyd got murdered. Well, time to start a streaming career. Let's go. There were loads of these fucking, like, lefties, particularly black lefties, and they jumped straight onto the fucking George Floyd murder clout train, and we're trying to generate fucking careers out of it almost. It was crazy. And Kay Swiftly, I think, fell well within that. And they, they transformed into this, like, what, 100 viewer Andy, I think. Pretty, pretty quickly off the back of covering all the, you know, stuff around it. And I'm pretty sure that they like went on like a panel with Hassan. And also on top of that as well, I'm pretty sure like Hassan raided them and stuff at the time too. Because that was 2020, like, you know, George Floyd just got murdered. Oh, you're a black streamer talking about this. Have a raid, have a fucking 30,000 person raid or whatever, right? So Hassan was like operating and working with some of these creators when it was beneficial for him to do so. But he doesn't do that anymore, does he? I doubt very much he's like seeking out small creators to raid with a big juicy raid. I'm pretty sure he mainly just raids within his high viewer streamer pals. They've got enough, <laughs> yeah. Hassan's taken the conservative position now. These blacks have had it too good for too long. 
okay? Reparations is over. Viewership reparations is done, okay? So the basic point that I'm making is that Hassan will distribute clout to whoever. Like, he, he does have this no-free clout policy, but he'll distribute clout when it's beneficial for him to do so, right? And not always in ways that are beneficial to the cause. So he will allow people with big right to platforms to come on to argue with them because it benefits him at the time. And he will also give attention to like smaller lefty creators too, but only when it's politically or, or advantageous for him to do so. And then that will obviously end when it's no longer convenient, right? That's the point I'm making. He just treats them like garbage. That's wonderful. But how do I hey, Content Sniffer, thanks for membership. People. Content underscore Sniffer became a member. Oh, wait, was that? Okay, that's wonderful. But how do I make... Oh, that's five gifted memberships. Oh, Topher with the five gifted me uh, memberships on YouTube. Thank you. Wait. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, they're all going to go off one by one, so I'm going to have to do this. Sorry. Regional range became a member. We get the idea. Thank you. So I was trying to go back and collect all of the vile things that were said about me. But if you've been following some of the recent controversies with Hassan, he had a very big public falling out with Ethan Klein, the co-host of his podcast Leftovers. Yo, which I is covered no this longer. extensively. Leftovers was canceled. Hassan's community was so vicious, it drove Ethan to the point of tears. And Frogan was the instigator for that. I mean, that is true. That did happen. Ethan <laughs> gave me his platform during all of the Kiwi Farm stuff, and I've always respected him for that. He deserved a lot better. But because of that, a lot of the history of Hoscord got nuked. And I only have so much to go over. These are a bunch of different mods from Hassan's community. These are some of the screenshots I sent both Austin Ox and Frogan, and was told by both of them, shut up and ignore it. <laughs> well, I didn't break the news. I just, the reason I'm saying that is not because I'm like, oh yeah, like obviously it's all on my channel. It's that, this is, did happen, right? This is true. What Kev was saying is, in my opinion, correct. That Ethan was pushed to the precipice off the back of Hassan's community going absolutely fucking ham on, on him, right? Um, so these are the moderators. So, the first tweet was me talking about how I needed help and how I was looking into inpatient rehab and talking about how I wanted to share with my audience my plans and saying thank you to everyone who supported me. I love you all. And one of Hassan's mods says, gonna make it into content right after too and laughing at me. <laughs> okay. Again, this is not about what you or I believe. What does Hassan think about this sort of thing? What is Hassan's perspective? What's his personal stated perspective about community toxicity and how content creators should deal with it and handle it? That's what this is about, regardless of what we think about these messages, okay? And it's not funny, okay? Come on. I disavow all these comments. Here's um, one of Hassan's mods saying cocaine probably and another Hassan mod replying, hey, calm down. It's the IDF, not Keffels. They may have the same reactionary mindset, but they're not the same. They said that I was worse than the IDF. So there was another um, another Hassan mod saying, never ask Heffels what she needs a break from. Wait, I don't understand that one. I might, I'm being retarded, I guess. What's that? What does that mean? Is it drugs? <laughs> <laughs> and the context here, which yeah. I couldn't get because uh, the Hos because Hoscore got nuked, was them saying they kept making jokes about how cocaine doesn't make you racist, and that I needed to go to rehab because I was racist. When a person from a marginalized background <laughs> is having a mental health spiral, and they very publicly need to admit that they need help, your response oh. is to kick them when they're down. That's not how leftists act. This is how people on the right act. This is how people who are groipers act like. So, there was a lot of comments like this 
from here, here's one of Hassan's top mods, G Boozer. Her well, no, no. I mean, this is the thing. Careful, careful's is that like, Hassan's community is filled with utter weird freaks who profess to be lefties, but they just take great pleasure in being cruel to people. And lefties, when but, but the the way it works is you you act like you have some sort of moral justification to do so, and then anything goes right. Yes. So this 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 correct. This is exactly what these lefties do. Um, based on Hassan's own ideas and principles about it. Yeah, obviously he should do more to crack down on it, but he doesn't. Or he should instruct his team of people to crack down on it based on what he himself thinks about this stuff. Not going to rehab was probably the most predictable shit ever. And another mod saying, wasn't that what the break was all about? And when I finally came back after inpatient care, one of Hassan's mods said, damn, Kethel's already back on Twitter? She got on that accelerated sobriety plan. Hope she keeps on unashamedly shouting the R word at people. Love that for her. Because to people in this community, mental health struggles are a joke. I tried to kill myself. And this is how that community treated me. And this is why I don't respect Hassan and I don't respect Hassan's community. Because when I needed help the most, they threw me under the bus. <laughs> I have logs to prove Chud is misogynistic. I plan to release them soon. <laughs> so oh. here was um another one of Hassan's mods in the middle here. Where one step away from Hassan follows me and didn't retweet my GoFundMe. Here's why he's not an ally discourse. And responding to a message that can be loaded, I mean I hate her because of the GoFundMe. She raised thousands of dollars for a lawsuit that, from the looks of it, is not happening at all. Oh my god! Wait, stop! I mean, maybe they're gonna reveal some information to debunk this. Um, but I mean, definitely at the time, there was no real indication that there was a lawsuit going ahead. When was this? 26th of January. I'm pretty sure that the complaint that was made was issued was at what, middle of the year or something like that? But at the time, yeah. I mean, there was no information that suggested a lawsuit was proceeding. Well, the money was also supposed to cover moving costs. So it is happening. I've made it public. I've no one cared. Oh, when sorry. I, I think I might have missed the super chat as well because I paused things. Did I miss it? Let me check. Oh, Coyote Cutie. Merry Christmas. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you too. I'm sorry I missed that. Merry Christmas to you too. I missed it because I paused the things, all the things. Put it out in public. Is that it? But it's still moving forward. Yeah, I think so. Turns out the legal process is incredibly slow. It's not content. <laughs> but to continue, the money was also... I mean, look, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm still open-minded to the point of like, okay, maybe there is going to be something that comes from it. I'm not completely closed off to that eventuality. But I think... I don't think it's unreasonable to think, certainly at the time, that nothing was happening. And even to this day, there hasn't really been any substantive proof or information that demonstrates anything is happening beyond this complaint that was made, which apparently is free to file. Yes, there's probably a cost of, of retaining a lawyer to do so, but, you know. I think the thing is with this charity shit, when you're giving money to a specific cause, it all needs to be itemized, labeled, full financial information. Yeah, exactly. It's the transparency aspect, right? It needs to be transparent. Because if you need... I put it, look, I've got to be real with you. If people, if someone, if, if there was some lawsuit against me, I probably would need to do some sort of GoFundMe thing. I mean, fucking Ethan Klein had to fundraise for, for a lawsuit a few years ago for his fucking shit, right? I'd probably just do the same thing. But <clears throat> what I'd want to try and do, if I was to do it, would be to have a very transparent accounting process so that people can see what's happening and what's going on with the money. I think anything less than that is, is, is not right at a minimum. And then on top of that as well, when there's other question marks that are raised, Chud L, what you mean for fundraising for a lawsuit? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd have to do it. I don't know how else I could manage it. It's quite expensive. I don't, I don't have that much money. I have to start e-begging. I guess it's a case of we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But if a push came to shove, I mean, imagine if someone took me to court for defamation. What do I do? Do I just 
back down or do I want to fight it? I don't know. It cross the bridge when we come to it. If I was wealthy enough to cover it, then yeah, I'd just I'd cover it. But if I'm not, I mean, I'd either have to just fucking bend over and take it or, or not. And there might be some lawsuits that I have to face and I can't not face and that's going to incur a cost that I might not be able to afford. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, the point I'm making is I'm not against GoFundMes in principle for needed funds. The problem comes in when A, you have, you've got the money available to afford it, probably not the case here, or B, it's fundraised on terms which might not actually be legitimate. And you're not able to tell that because there's not enough transparency. And then there's other question marks with the drug stuff that came in and all this kind of stuff. So yeah, a lot of this stuff hasn't been answered for. It's not unreasonable, particularly at this time for someone to say this. So acting now, when even now there still isn't really enough information to prove that anything's happening. Oh, look who it is. Hey, President Sunday. Give the name some respect. And 50K wasn't nearly enough. I don't doubt she had big plans for the money, but 100K, while a lot of the money for a bunch of poor trans audience members is peanuts if you're trying to sue a police department. Well, this is the other thing that I saw that kind of like gave me an opinion earlier that I'm still kind of weighing up, right? And it's like, how much malice is involved in this? Did Kefels look at it and think, ha ha ha, like this, ha ha ha, time to get 100K for my audience? Or is it a bit like a gambling addict thinking you can pay back your debts so you get a bunch of money and then gamble it instead? As in like, oh, I'm going to fundraise because something bad has happened to me. Oh, I'm getting all this money coming through. Oh, well, maybe I could spend a little bit on X, Y, and Z. Nothing. I'm not specifying. I'm not defaming. I'm just speculating, okay? You know, a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. And then before you know it, you're in the hole and it gets, do you know what I mean? It's like this, I can easily see a world where there was some form of intent there that wasn't completely malicious, okay, that's but wonderful. it became worse. But how do I make money? Thank you for the membership. OGW became a member. Like Slicker. Slicker's okay, a great example wonderful. of this, right? How do I make money? I'm confident. Killing you Thank you for the memberships. Member. Sorry for another five memberships. Thank you. I don't know how to turn off notifications because okay, it just cycles through them all without but doing how this. How do I make money off depressed people? Runs zero base. I'm certain. I'm certain that Slicker had some level of intent of wanting to pay people back. Okay. I don't think that Slicker was sat there thinking, I need to place a bet. So I'm going to ask someone for money. I think what was more likely is he was like, I need to pay money back to this person. What am I going to do? Fuck, I'll ask someone else for it, right? Oh, listen, I made up a lie, but maybe had intended to pay them back. But then what happens? He gets 4K in his bank account, right? He gets 4K in his bank account. He's about to do the transfer. And then he goes, wait a second. There's that tennis match on later. I reckon there's a couple of decent parley bets to be had on that bad boy. Okay. What have we got? Oh, number of times the ball goes out, a number of fucking uh, aces. Oh, yeah, let's bet on that. Boom, and then the money's gone. <laughs> right? And I can definitely envision a similar situation here of like, I'm going to raise money and, you know, ostensibly for some cause. And then before you know it, it's a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there. And then, yeah, you can't really account for it because you've used it to fund things you shouldn't have used to fund. But anyway, that's my speculation. Who knows for sure? Unfortunately, we're probably never going to have full accounting of it, so we're never going to know what happened with it. But anyway, it's not unreasonable for people to think that nothing's happening, bearing in mind there was no proof or evidence that anything was happening. So supposed to cover moving costs, <laughs> which is already really vague. And instead of using that money for hotels and stuff while she was traveling, she decided to skimp out and stay with people, putting them in the same danger she was in. It's really weird to criticize me for trying to be responsible with my, with my money. But the thing that really pissed me off the most, looking back on this in retrospect, when she went to Ireland, she stayed with Ellen from now on and got her doxxed. Instead of apologizing, she turned it into a photo op with the fucking cops. It's dire stuff in my eyes, and she blocks even the slightest criticism of her on Twitter. So, two things. I share a bed with Ellen every night. And the other thing. Let's go back <laughs> okay. to what Austinok said. Going back. We're going back. 
Reverse. Reverse, reverse. This is going to take a bit. I'm guessing, well, I don't know if that's a confirmation. I don't know for sure, but apparently there was some rumor that Keffels and this other trans individual were... I don't fucking know, dude. <laughs> I don't fucking know, okay? Look. Unlike some of you guys, I do not follow the ins and outs of every trans person's existence, okay? <laughs> I hope wherever you move, the police will take it seriously this time when you tell them about swatting concerns. And they did. They did take it seriously. To the point where I had a sit-down dinner with them. And when they asked me for a photo, I said yes. By the way... Is part of the reason that you call me a chaser because I follow certain trans individuals on Twitter? Because I just want to make it clear that the only reason that's the case is because normally they followed me, so I just follow them back as a courtesy. And then, and all before you know it, whoa, what the fuck? What's all this on my feed? Where did this come from? Oh my goodness, how do I stop this? Oh, well, it's never, nothing I can do about it now. There's nothing I can do about it now, guys. Sorry, I just... Oh, Jesus, this is terrible. <laughs> terrible business. <laughs> oh. Because I wanted to be safe. I was under an NDA for over a year. The day the Queen died... Chelsea Manning was sitting on the couch beside me. I contracted her security company because she told me that there was a chance someone was going to kill me. Jesus, Chelsea Manning's going That was crazy. one of the things that I used the GoFundMe funds on. Okay. I mean, at this point, I've got to be honest, okay? Going to need to see some paperwork, I think, personally. If you want to think whatever you you want about it, that's fine. Me personally... Without paperwork, I am not going to believe anything that's stated, okay, personally. I think Keffels has unfortunately burned through any any goodwill on statements made, personally. But, yeah, that's something that's going to need... <laughs> yeah, they were going to kill me, so I got a security team. Trust me. <clears throat> so I was willing to do anything to protect myself. Okay, and none wonderful. of these fucking LARPers well, have any fucking idea what that's like. People. Back off, Chud. Keffels only wants the tip. Tipster, thank you for three bucks. <sighs> okay, here we go. Now. Oh. Kevels, is Hassan platform tape really a good point? It's not about... I don't care that he platform tape. I care about the hypocrisy of it. I mean, the, the, that is a valid point in that Hassan will, will say he does the no clout thing, but he'll distribute clout according to when it benefits him. Right, That's a completely accurate assessment of Hassan as far as I'm concerned. Oh. Wait a second. <laughs> Is 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 the Hoscord reg really in my Twitch chat? Oh. Wait, da, da, Gorby da. is. <laughs> Gorby. That's really Gorby fucking chaff. sad, dude. <sighs> Gorby Chav. That's a funny name. I like that. But to that. To that, I really say, instead of asking me to disprove these claims, why don't you prove that these claims are true in the first place? If the onus shouldn't be on me, like if if I if oh. I just go up to you and say, "Why did you beat your wife?" You shouldn't have to prove. Can't it. prove a negative. No, uh oh. If I have no context of who you are, that's just a false allegation. Oh, Baden Panada is in the mix. So, I also Spoiler. want to talk about another person who spread this pretended to go to rehab lie. Baden Panada on the George Jr. burner account, June 18th. 
other people donated two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to trans charities. Meanwhile, you stole the one hundred thousand dollars that was donated to you, <laughs> spent it on cocaine. It is, it is true that you obviously can't prove a negative, but obviously, you know, as I said already, my perspective is well, without full accounting and financial transparency, who the fuck knows what happened with the money? Um, but yeah, I mean, bad empanadas are fucking schizoid on Twitter, isn't he? So. And pretended to go to rehab to elicit sympathy for having spent a year doing nothing. So, you want to know where the, the rehab thing originated? It's also Punish Nico. I'm not fucking shitting. This stuff writes itself. So on who's, April 18th, Punish Nico posted on Kiwi Farms. So the other day I said I just stumbled down quite a deep rabbit hole. Let's just say that rabbit hole I was going down has widened and become a cave. Chad, are you saying she's guilty until proven innocent? Um, <clears throat> what I'm saying is nothing about guilty until proven innocent or anything like that. The basic point that I'm making is that if you have a very public fundraising campaign and profess it's for a certain cause or certain thing, which has changed repeatedly throughout this fundraising and onwards from there, um, and then there's various times where you comment on it being spent on something here, something there, a little bit here, a little bit there. That creates a lot of doubt about what actually happened. And for me personally, I would, would you know, and this is, obviously, Kevin's going to talk the fuck she wants, okay? I thought Kevin's gives two fucks about what I think about her, okay? But, like, for me, if there was full accounting and transparency about what happened with the 100K... You know, I would happily say, okay, well, I said some things that maybe didn't turn out to be true or was wrong about this or wrong about that, happily. But without that information, how can I possibly know what happened when the story's changed so much? So, no, I'm not saying that Kefels is guilty. I'm just saying that I suspect that the funds were not used for the purposes that were, were stated. But without full um, financial transparency, it's impossible for me to know one way or another. So I'm going to continue to be skeptical. Um, even though I do think people can change, which is what I said. It's funny because when I covered Keffel's originally talking about Xanderhal, my point was, I'm still skeptical, but I do believe people can change and should be given the opportunity to do so, which I still hold to. But the stuff that's happening here just pushes me in the other direction because I'm like, okay, this is like Keffel's modus operandi once again. Is that the right way of saying that? I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like she's doing the same thing she always does, right? So I continue to be skeptical system filled with all manner of gems it's so good that i'm including a meme this write-up is actually going to take quite some time more free time than i have today if i want to format it the best i can i know i just called out someone for essentially baiting struggling oh, randy sorry baiting slash stringing people along but i'm going to need a day or two to think about how to format it give me a pass for not posting today, friends. it's too good to rush but it's also so good that i can't help but share that i'd made a discovery much like the first man to discover fire and um i shit you not the post is this long and um, their evidence was figuring out what my private locked account was and trying to figure out what was going on in my life based on what people were oh, I've seen based this. on what people were replying to that account. That was that was the evidence that I apparently lied about going to rehab. Um, kind of crazy how you can just disprove that in like one email. Um, so I, before I started the stream, like at the start of my day, I messaged the clinical supervisor for Addiction Rehab Toronto, like, Keffel's regs are posting coke jokes in uh, Hoscord right now. Can you show me? Ooh. Just post it in the, uh, the stream content. Oh, poor Randoy. Okay, whatever. Okay. Listen. These people are fucking Nazis, I swear <laughs> to God. So, here's what the... Damn, President Sunday's going in. I mean, the thing is unconscionable that the last year took place and she didn't mismanage both the GoFundMe, raising the amount without explanation to bait more and more cash and the funds. Listen, President Sunday may be annoyingly autistic sometimes, okay? However, he's a very principled man. You cannot deny that. Here's what the clinical supervisor of my rehab said. Hi, Clara. So nice to hear from you and amazing to hear that the path to healing still continues for you today. It's so amazing to hear stories of others who are thriving in their sobriety. Win Sunday. I did not do much other than try to provide a comfortable space for people to do their healing. You did all the hard work for this. It was a real pleasure having had the chance to meet you and in that and in that breath learned so much from you as well. So I still have to have a call with him and um, I'm going to get my physical certificate. I mean, listen, I don't think the rehab is fake. I think the rehab is real. Um, whilst this doesn't, I mean, you know, irrelevant to any of this is being shown on the screen. 
I think the rehab happened and the narrative that it didn't is based probably on some faulty premise or information because I mean, listen, I could be wrong on that, but I like, would be fucking insane to fake going to rehab. That seems like excessive and, you know. <laughs> oh, It's kind of crazy how, it, how easy it was to prove that. It's like, this would be really fucking weird to lie about. Because if, if I were to lie about anything, I, I would not lie about being a drug addict considering how Hassan's community has treated me as a result. If I was to lie about anything, I would not lie about being a drug addict. Hmm. Wouldn't you rather hide that you went to rehab? <clears throat> well, listen, this is all off the top of my head. Again, a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of detailed information you need to know and understand and go into, okay? The rehab thing happened, like, I think the reason that the rehab thing was such a big deal is it gave some justification to the 100K, even though it was never supposed to be used for that in the first place. Um... And secondly, on top of that as well, it creates a victimhood situation where she can utilize that as she's doing now to bash people that shit on her for it, right? I mean, it's kind of like bait in a way, I guess. You know, like, oh, mocking me for being a drug addict. That's bad, isn't it? Particularly when it's lefties that are doing it. All of that. It's in stream discussions? Oh, I was talking a different channel. Let me take a look. Yeah, so as we're doing the stream, this is what... One of Hassan's top moderators just posted. I've not exactly seen what's been made out here, but it seems like you're drama farming, which is fine, but you're making this out to be way juicier drama than it is. I mean, yeah, but that's because Keffels is doing that. I'm just responding and looking at what Keffels is saying. I don't really know what I'm doing beyond that. Unless you're talking to Keffels. These are the people who have positions of authority in the largest progressive leftist community on the internet. These <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> also, I saw this pointed out, so I'm plagiarizing a tweet or something, I think. But Roadrunner always wins against Wiley Coyote. Roadrunner always is the winner of the cartoon. So in some ways you're actually, well, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I mean, Kevils is, is Roadrunner, right? Constantly getting away from bad shit, purely off the back of luck sometimes. These people are fucking disgusting. So it's layered. There's layers to it. The people I went to, uh, people well, I was in rehab died. People I talked to and had dinner with every day died after they left rehab. Oh. And this is just a joke to you because you're just a sick fuck. And when I brought all of this stuff up... Here on a reminder that... They, okay, you might think this is based and funny, okay? I've got no comment either way. But here's the thing. What is Hassan's principles and ideals? Okay? Hassan is someone, again, who has a lot to say about other people's toxicity. So, you know, it's about Hassan's perspective on this. Hassan, obviously, from his own ideals, should be doing way more to crack down on this. But obviously, he doesn't care. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe he's too busy or something. I don't know. But, uh, you know, it's pretty evident that he doesn't care about this kind of stuff, despite him caring about other toxicity in other communities. But I find it. When I brought all this stuff up, they just told me funny. to ignore this shit. But I put it, I put it all out there. You can all see how fucking gross this is. <clears throat> Crack down on you. So Wait, no. I got banned from the Twitter <laughs> chat. No, stop it. Jeep user, you no. can't just come in here at random and drop a grenade like that and leave. I can't shit on Keffels. Is this Orwell Danimal Farms? I talk about hate crimes. I talk about drug addiction and death and trauma and they act like fucking groipers the reason i wanted to put out this stream was to show how fucking vile this community is they're literally just making my point
<laughs> the fact that they turned it into a meme like that. Oh my god. Oh, it's a video. None of this shit's funny. Like, if you think shit like this is funny, you are a privileged fuck. This shit kills people. I mean... Like, all of the... Yeah, I just... Dark humor is making like a bad situation. I mean, this is this is like not really dark humor as such, right? Dark humor is often very. Th this is obviously just shitting on Kefels because they hate Kefels, right? But I, I don't think you can police what is and isn't funny. I mean, yeah, people are going to find this funny because it's making light of something that's very bad. Normally, it's taboo. These people <laughs> work about being epic commies. You wouldn't last a fucking day in the global south. Jesus Christ! But again, don't forget whose community we're dealing with, and that the person who supposedly hates this the toxicity and trolls that seemingly doesn't really care about it within their own situation. So. Comparison to past month? Dude, actually, you know what? Fuck this. I Wait. Oh. Wait, he really said Comparison it? to past month? Dude, actually, you know what? Fuck this. I can't argue with retards, okay? You're retarded. I'm being ableist, and you're fucking retarded. So there's no way I can argue with you on this issue. I'm done. Okay? That's it. It's just, I can't. I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I literally can't do it. I don't give a fuck if your parents die of fucking coronavirus. I literally cannot do it. I'm going to cover the fucking rational disconnect video or a thread. Comparison to past months. Dude. That's an old stream. Those people criticizing you for bringing it up all the time are so dense. It's good to see an ex-addict succeed. This stream right now just surpassed the all-time high. The all-time highest peak viewership of any stream I've ever done. I didn't get a single fucking raid. I just passed the all-time highest grossing month in my entire fucking career. What? <laughs> Taking a little break to just say how based your content creation is. I don't, that's kind of wild to me. <laughs> and I did it with this community. <clears throat> I'm, not a, I'm not a Vosh orbiter. I'm not a Hassan orbiter. I, ob I orbit no other streamer. This is our community. And we're going to make 2024 a fucking banger year. I mean, sure, that's nice to think, but like, obviously it's called the Asan Arby Manifesto. Obviously, you're going to get a bunch of people watching because people are like, what the hell is this all about? <laughs> so, you know, and don't get me wrong, fair play for getting your viewers. I'm all for it. I'm all for fucking farming drama. Okay. <clears throat> but it's the statement of what the drama is, is way overboard versus what we've actually seen here, which amounts to... Yeah, some people from Asan's community were shitty to me at bad points in my life. And Asan isn't really that meaningfully involved beyond criticizing him for not moderating his community like he thinks others should moderate their community. That's that's the length of this for me. But it's been drummed up into some manifesto when barely any of it is about Asan. The only thing about Asan is, oh, he didn't really support me initially and said something and then he said something else later. But okay, anyway. Countdown to the fact people use it. Oh, oh sh people accusing people of clout shit. It's, it's stupid. I don't give a fuck. The moment that they criticize me for struggling with drug addiction, they can't criticize me for being a clout chaser. They don't give a fuck about marginalized people. You want to criticize me for being a drug addict? You need to... Uh, no, none of this was posted by Hassan. The only... None of the... It's all... Well, Hassan mods, I guess. Are the, the closest thing. Oh, President Sunday with a win take. I think the views from the Xanderhal stuff went to her head and she thought she was an unstoppable force who could become an epic politics god if she just did that again, rinse and repeat. Yeah, actually, President Sunday, I've been watching you from afar, okay? Right? I've been watching your tweets. Now, I saw a couple of your tweets about this and I, I, was, I was like this when I saw it. I was like, hmm, that's so true. Absolute W, President Sunday. But you put a tweet out and it was like a screenshot of one of the streams and it was like, this is getting a bit tired now. And I was like, yeah, no, it is. And that's exactly what's going on. You've nailed it for once. <laughs> but yes, that is exactly what is happening here. It is, oh, I'm getting a lot of views by covering this this stuff. How can I continue it further? So there's been this concoction of this Hassan drama, which isn't really that meaningful. Um, and obviously a lot of people hate Hassan at the moment. So people are really enjoying it. And listen, I'm not a Hassan fan. I think there's some stuff here which is criticizable. But it's been drummed up into something beyond what it really is, in my personal opinion. Say that you don't give a fuck about marginalized people. Because predominantly, the people who struggle with drug addiction are from marginalized backgrounds. They're from racialized backgrounds. They're people who struggle with addiction. 
I think it's like something like 40% of homeless people through this anyway. have a disability. And the addiction rate among homeless people is significantly higher than in the general population. You can't claim that you give a shit about these things if you're willing to just isolate that and then act like I'm a fucking degenerate for trying to cope with a terrible situation. DGG has 400 plus embedded right now watching DGGL. DGGL. I don't, I don't agree with Destiny on everything. There's a lot I still disagree with him on. Yeah, I but do think part of this is probably courting DGG as well. I mean, that's an easy way, isn't it? It's just a shit on his arm. So. He's willing to fucking talk to me. He didn't treat me like I was beneath him. He was willing to have a conversation in my face, and he was willing to shake my hand. And that's more than Hassan has ever done. I appreciate people who treat me like I'm a fucking human being. Okay. I covered what I wanted to cover. I, I have a lot more to talk about, obviously. But a lot of this stuff was me explaining why I fell out with Hassan in the first place. Like the politics stuff, that's an entire different ballgame. Like I have, I have clips of, I have clips of Akeem. Like th this is, Hassan went on the deprogram pod. I have clips of Hakeem denying the Tiananmen Square massacre. I have clips of Hakeem denying the Hall of Demore. I have clips of Ukraine of Hakeem saying that every single Hamas fighter is based. I have clips of Hakeem saying that Saddam Hussein is based. I have all of this shit, and I'm sitting on it. Because when I do a stream, I want to compile everything. I want to show you the connections. I don't just go live every day for eight fucking hours and give lukewarm commentary like Hassan does. <sighs> sitting on nukes, much like Saddam was, am I right? Yo! <laughs> well, that's what the Americans thought, and then they blew through Iraq, and fucking were like, oh, actually, maybe we got that bit wrong. Oops. Oh, well. Puppet leader installed. There we go. We're spreading democracy based. Anyway, it's too early. It's too early for fucking foreign policy shit that I don't even know about, okay? Oh. Yeah. This, In fact, this whole manifesto reminds me of the Iraq war because there's nothing really here. Am I right? Okay, come on. Nah, the Brit. Yeah, the Brits didn't get, they get involved. That's true. Chad, can you watch and comment on the <laughs> <Okay. laughs> What is it with you guys? Chad, can you just be more transphobic, please? <laughs> well, it's not just a Hakeem. No, I disavow. Hassan has been using his platform to boost Second Thought. Second Thought was radicalized into okay, a Marxist okay, Zionist explicitly by Hakeem and like showed like the oh, off to press people. Oh, kick sub. Thank you very much. Don't be such a quack. Appreciate that. Listen, I've got to be honest with you. Sorry, I didn't really comment much. Guild by Association is cringe. Okay, yeah, Keem's got some wild takes, I'm sure. He's some Middle Eastern communist guy. I'm sure he's got some insane takes. Um, but, you know. I guess, I guess, I mean, I'm imagining Hassan probably holds the view that if you're sat, you know, if, if there's one person sat at a table of 10 Nazis, there's 11 Nazis there. I'm pretty sure Hassan probably thinks that. So I'm sure that he, he is just as justified in getting guilt by associated as he does to others. But, uh, yeah. Deleted in private videos, everything's been archived. One of the things that when you go through hard situations, sometimes you can learn a lot from them. You know what I learned from last year? From getting doxxed? From getting hacked? And I didn't even talk about the hacking because that's like a federal U.S. investigation now and I can't say shit. But I watched all of this happen. I watched my whole family get doxxed. I watched every single piece of my life get picked apart bit by bit. By the way, guys, um, so we're going to finish watching this. And then we've got, I'm calling it a rate review because I don't know what's in it. It's, the, it's at least formatted like a rate review. And it's to do with that person that accused someone at TwitchCon. Something else has happened. And there's some fucking 22-page document. It's a festive miracle. A rape or something a bit like a rape maybe happen. I don't know. We'll find out. 
So that's coming up right next after this. And now I'm, don't touch that dial. I'm really good at, at finding stuff that people don't want to be seen. And that is a very useful skill going into the future. No, I'm very much against doxing. I don't want to. I don't want to dox anyone. I don't want to put out anyone's home address. Mm. I don't want to put every anyone's personal. Is that true though? Is that actually true? Is that true? Is that really true though? <laughs> I'm not so sure about that personally. Anyway, safety in jeopardy. But there's a lot of really shady people out there who call themselves leftists who have a lot of secrets. <gasps> and. This next year is going to be fun. That's, that's all I'm going to say. Oh. I'm going to read my donos, and I'm going to call it a night. If you like the, if you like the direction the content's been heading recently, make sure to subscribe on Keffels Live, or subscribe on the site chat, keffels.gg slash live. I've been loving where things are going. I've been loving seeing the stream grow. Is that it? And most of all, I'm happy that we have our own community that's independent of anyone. Guys, watch out. You want to... <laughs> oh, boy. I'm waiting for the Chud Logic spicy chat leaks. That's going to be a, that's going to be rough. In fact, speaking of which, make sure to come by for the end of your show, which we've not confirmed the date. We probably need to do that um, because I'm going to be on limited time frames later this month. Probably the 30th, I guess. But um, but yeah, there's going to be some accounting for certain messages that may be racist in nature. But uh, anyway, I'm not going to listen to all the super chats. That's a good good time to wind it up, I think. Listen, guys, that was a bit of a uh, nothing burger. Hopefully it was fun. Hopefully it was fun. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I had a good time covering it. There we go. There's the drama. <laughs>